All right, all right, all right. So today I'm rebuilding the recently eliminated Golden State Warriors. They got smoked by Sacramento in the first game or the second game of the play in. All the memes and talk are flying right now that the dynasty is over. Well, the big three or whatever you want to call it by this point is over. Clay Thompson shot 0 for 10, his first game with zero shots made since his rookie season. At least that's what I saw. And I saw a quote from Steph Curry that said, I just want to win. Whatever the hell that means, I just want to win. They're also paying A. Andrew Wiggins this travesty. Clay Thompson's a free agent right now. Thankfully, Chris Paul's $30 million contract for this season is non-guaranteed, so I, for some reason, 2K didn't have it as a team option, so I just edited it, made it $1 million, we'll live. I can release him, and then, you know, we'll never think about it again. And speaking of moves in general, I have the trade difficulty on 100. I have the Beyond Hall of Fame sliders on, just be, just in case I want to treat this with, like, some of my recent videos where I play a little bit, but even if I don't, even if I just let, let us watch, which I might do, honestly, like, like good old times, like normal times. And shout out to this dude. This is the dude who's been making the rosters that I've been using lately, which is literally just the most downloaded roster on xbox or playstation i saw he messaged or mentioned me on twitter and said i made a start today with my roster on it so that's what i use for this so like all the realistic jump shots and like potentials and regressions and all that stuff is on here which is cool so post draft lottery by the way we have no picks and how i see this rebuild going how i plan to deal with this is that look they already kind of started this up by trading jordan Poole for chris paul which is that they knew chris paul's 30 million is non-guaranteed aka he's expiring so they save all the money that they you know basically were gonna waste on jordan pool if they assumed he wasn't gonna be good they're still stuck with this wiggins contract but you save a lot of money from that clay thompson is also expiring they freed up money to work stuff around step and also too kuminga's on the last year of his contract after this so you gotta we gotta use that money especially in 2k i don't know you know if they want to go into the luxury tax in real life again but in 2k i don't give a damn and i gotta use this money this year for the end of steph's run right now if that doesn't work we'll be seeing this video go post steph era in to God knows what. Before we go any further, I want to thank you to Prize Picks for sponsoring this video. Prize Picks is the best place to play daily fantasy sports. Available in over 30 states. You can use the code CLICK. You can get it through 100% back on $100 of your first deposit. You have to be 19 or older to play. Age restrictions vary from state to state, and please play responsibly. Also, with Prize Picks' Demons and Goblins feature, you can win up to 100 times your money. All right, so for today's picks, I'm going to take Derek Jones Jr. for more on turnovers and the Clippers. Good defense, good wings. Speaking of that same series, though, Kyrie Irving, 24 and a half points. I'm going to go more on him as well. He's need to step up to the plate for them to win hollow at 12 and a half rebounds and assists this is definitely more for me he's gonna be playing a lot in that series jay crowder half a block and steal versus indiana i'll take more on that he's also gonna have to play a lot with Giannis out and lastly herb jones at a three and a half zion's out and have more responsibility i'll take more on that as well I'm going up to 10 times my money on this you can up to 100 times your money on prize picks thank you to prize for sponsoring this video maybe use the code click at the link in the description to get up to 100 percent back on 100 dollars of your first deposit and now to get back to the video because as of right now now, you know, like, for example, Boston is a good example. Well, mm. Boston, like, slightly caught a lucky break with, like, that little Isaiah Thomas era they had and became good again before then, then like, transitioned to the Jason Tatum era. What I was going to say is they were racking up, like, young players that were playing big minutes on their deep playoff teams that play teams that went far into the playoff. The Warriors, um, Poole was one of them. They got rid of them. They got Kuminga now. They got Pojemski. They got Jackson Davis. He's 24, but that's really it. Uh, they, oh, and then Moody's cool too. That's really it. You got nothing else to show for it. So another thing I'm about to do, as long as they do have their picks, which I believe past this year, they should have thankfully all of their picks. I also am going to have to try and build up a future with their, you know, scarcity. And, you know, first and foremost, ideally it would be trading Wiggins. And I don't know what the hell, I know I have it on a hundred trade difficulty, but honestly, everything feels like it's unfair to trade Andrew Wiggins for because this contract is terrible and he's not really that good anymore. Like I was actually looking through these and I was like the Spurs, maybe cause like, you know, maybe like the, nobody want to go to the Spurs because they suck. But then I'm like, oh, but maybe someone would cause they have Victor. I saw the Raptors and I was like, screw it. They'd be giving up basically nothing. Nobody wants to go to Toronto. Toronto anyways right now in their current situation probably I don't know Pacers for literally a first round pick <laughs> this would be the best contractually as of today but would they want to do this I don't know I think morally on my conscience I can't get rid of Wiggins honestly this is too trash um my first move as GM was to sign Lamar no it's gonna be to release Chris Paul Chris Paul the only reason I'm doing this really I could even re-sign him if I wanted to but like I said he's going to be a free agent this offseason as long as they have their head on straight so yeah 
from there honestly um you know what damn i was actually gonna trade kavan looney but there's like no good trades for him either we're gonna thug it out for now sadly no draft picks this year no nothing no fun literally none gary paid in trash self accepted his player options sorry gary could not give usman garuba no no contract extension thing sadly we yeah we have no money either there was literally no point of freeing cap space <laughs> Because even with Clay, even with Clay as a free agent, we still don't have money with cap space. I'm not going to lie, though. There really isn't many free agents I would even want out of this class. At least, like, that would even cost much money. Oh, man. I don't think I've ever spent this much time just sitting around trying to decide what to do because there's nowhere to go. And... I, I made some big decisions in free agency that you're really, really going to love. Front office, roster. We have re-signed Clay Thompson and Chris Paul to one-year deals. Clay specifically as a player option. I mean, a team option, but, you know, probably going to decline that. And on top of that, we have signed Zach Eady, who was the 12th pick in the second round. But in case you know, second round picks never get signed. Uh, Zach Eady to a two-year contract. Ty Ty Washington to a one-year contract. And uh, this dude who I saw had a high potential. Yeah, that's literally it. There's nothing else to do. So what I'm going to monitor is how does this team perform in 2K Sim and in general come the trade deadline. And then when the trade deadline comes around, everything is on the on the you know possibility list, even even trading Steph. I'm gonna be honest with you. Because if this team isn't good right now with Steph Curry, also I made Kuminga a small forward and he got way better. He went up by three, which is pretty cool. And his shot tendency is only a 75, which is a big issue. This needs to be 90 and 90 for touches and or whatever 95 you're, you're this is the future i do rock with kuminga i think he's got some you know rough patches in this game but nonetheless i rock with kuminga i'm honestly too because i think we're at 15 players yeah we're at the full 15 man roster and i don't even know who else we would sign i mean just andre drummer for the hell of it but we we genuinely do have our roster filled out positionally i'm gonna sign a few guys to two-way contracts and then call it a day why, why are you giving out a qualifying offers when i didn't offer them what the hell is that about play went down by three and chris paul went down by two that's not that surprising kuminga technically went up by one because he was an 86 after made him a small forward oh gm skis up to an 82 trace jackson got a little bit better somehow draymond didn't get worse he actually got a little bit better and you know what i'm actually gonna make one more executive decision because they used up one of my roster spots for usman garuba you know what the kings don't have a backup center why not send him the dude that was getting like 40 rebounds on them Kevon Looney and Gui Santos for their 2026 first round protected and Sasha Vezenkov, whatever. Honestly, I would even put this lottery protected, but I already know how 2K works. They're going to say, oh, we don't like that offer, even though it's a better offer. So screw it. I'll just take top three protected. It'll probably be, they'll probably be in the playoffs anyways. If not, I'll take my luck. All right. The terrifying lineup to start off. Curry, Pojemski, Kuminga, Draymond, and Trace Jackson will start. I rock with the three young guys we got in the lineup here. And then off the bench is basically a, a, for, a former starting lineup, honestly, with Wiggins, Paul, Clay, and then Moses Moody getting 15 minutes, and Zach Eady to round off the bench. Gary Payton, you're not getting no minutes right now. Uh, maybe I can find a suitor for you later on in this world. And you know what? So far, our only two wins are against. And actually, I just saw Pozjemski in a trade thing. I want to make sure too. Yeah, make sure he's shooting a lot as well. He he was getting some buckets last season in real life. Yeah, because honestly, aside from him, Kuminga and Curry, there's nobody else on the team who even wants to shoot the basketball. So we're gonna need help in that regard. You know what? Actually, we're we're gonna. You know, I know how people talk about Zach Eady, which shoot, I'm people too. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, probably he probably can't translate his type of game to the NBA, but we're gonna we're gonna make sure to translate in this. Screw it. Wait, what's he gotta have? Some po some close shot, some post hook on him. Come on, like like put some shots up off the bench. You're gonna be our bench creator god we're in a terrible place damn how bradley beal has like 40 years left right yeah if bradley beal was on an expiring i no joke would have took this trade which would have been draymond and wiggins if if beal was expiring because my thought process would be like two draymond and wiggins is low-key decent fits for the for the suns because like a tall wing and an elite defender instead of bradley beal like who maybe is a little bit redundant for them and then i would have taken him to be like you know just salary filler until the end of the season and then you know we can start our start a new all reading a first round pick get the hell out of here we're actually over 500 right now but we're not or it might be now but we're seventh in the playoffs right now at 12 and 10 which isn't terrible and this is the thing right with a lot of rebuilds like for example let's say i have a 28 year old stephen curry with a terrible team around him i will mitigate the entire future for the sake of you know what i'm saying making this team right now good and honestly i could see the warriors still doing something like that in real life for the 
short-term old man Steph Curry future. I'm not doing it. I will sooner start a rebuild and ruin the team within the next two seasons and trade Steph to Charlotte because I'm not about to sit around here with no picks, no assets. And I don't want to get grimy and just sign a bunch of free agents that wouldn't have came to no team with no nothing anyways. Shout out to Grayson Allen. I just got offered a trade for him. I saw he got his bag. He led the league in three-point percentage this season at like 46. Corey Kispert for Jonathan Kuminga all over my dead body. Speaking of uh, stuff, Steph Curry will resign. Two years left on his deal. Hey, Amen. There is not a chance on God's green earth I let Steph Curry ever hit free agency in this. I will be stealing as much money as I can from you giving you the Jalen Brunson Express, the front-loaded contract. But with that being said, um, yeah, not a chance in hell I ever let Steph hit unrestricted free agency. So there's really no upside to it. I will sign him until he's 41 years old. Yes, he would still be good. So thank you. Gary Payton will resign. I'd rather you leave. I mean, maybe on a minimum, you'd be cool, but I could just resign you when the time comes at that point. Uh, screw it. It's almost a trade deadline. Obviously, injuries aren't on either, so there's really no... It in I mean, I'm going to go to it anyways. Man, I keep on getting so many trades for Kuminga. I'm going to just make it clear at this point, you know, Kuminga's got to be the dude that untouchables. We got to treat Kuminga like, you know what I'm saying? We got to have some culture here, right? And he's got to be the culture. Rock with him. He's got great. What's the word? Um, Kuminga's got like really good, like instinctual movement. And I like what Clyde Frazier will say sometimes to say the players like herky jerky. Like he kind of moves like a six foot seven Giannis from time to time. So yeah, I'm not going to trade him. We're somehow third in the conference. I am playing Steph 40 minutes a game. So there's also that. I feel like the, uh, the, uh, what's it called making yeah kuminga and pojemski the main options probably helps a lot trace jackson's also averaging 12 and 10 and draymond speaking of him too he randomly just started hitting threes lately i don't know about in the game oh yeah they got him at a 78 um yeah he i i saw the first shot he hit in the game today was a three from the right corner he shot it with no hesitation i'm like damn also is trace jackson shooting a lot of threes because he has a 47 three-point shot 29 of them things yeah, can we just take it off? You're never going to develop one. Just don't shoot him. If you have a 40 something. Oh, it's at zero. Okay, so he's just cra he's just a crackhead. Now, I have learned from some of my, you know, videos I've done lately where, you know, I can't always trust the uh, estimated wins added because sometimes you got good defensive players who, you know, will be bad on the wins added stuff, but they'll still be positive because they're good at defense, you know, whatever. But it's still a good determinator for like Trace Jackson Davis at 5.7. That's got to mean something. He's doing really, really well for us. He's going to be here for a while. He might... Whether or not I end up putting him at power forward, a power forward that can't shoot nonetheless, but that could always work next to a center that could shoot. And Chris Paul, yeah, honestly, I, I looking at the free agent point guards, I was like, there's really no better option. So we ball. So what's Zach Eady averaging? I'm just, I'm curious. Six and a half points, four rebounds. I mean, we're playing pl pretty well. We're playing pretty well. Can I see real quick? Just because I'm not playing him and we got to, we got to, you know, leverage our assets at any, any spot we can get them. Like I'll take second round picks for like a Gary Payton, the second, you know, it's funny. I, I said to one of my friends the other day, I was like Gary Payton Jr. And he's like, that's his brother. What do you mean? Uh, yeah. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in a video before, but Gary Payton, the second has a brother named Gary Payton Jr. Gary Payton has two sons named Gary Payton and one's the second and one's junior. This isn't a joke. You could Google this. Hey, you know what? Clippers are offering me Terrence Mann and a first round pick for a very, very distant first for Gary Payton and Ty Ty Washington. I know this isn't super like, you know, whatever blockbuster, realistic, whatever. Terrence Mann ain't really worth nothing this game. He's shooting 29% from three. He's got a negative wins added if we want to value that. Basically, he's trash for them right now. He's their only shooting guard, whereas Gary Payton would be their starting shooting guard now if I was to trade him there with fantastic defense. He just doesn't fit what I'm going for right now. I feel like we need to develop our... We got younger guys like Poe Ziemski and Moses Moody at places where like Gary Payton would play for us. And I'm not going to play Terrence Mann either. I might even just try and trade him again. So you know what? If he brings value to you guys, I'm down to trade him for a first round pick because we're, we're going to need whatever we can get. Clippers, obviously. And, and by the way, he's playing next to James Harden. So he's going to be the new point of attack defender if they want to leave Kawhi down with the bigs or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Leave, leave it up to them. With the bigger players, I should say. Not bigs, but whatever. And yeah, screw it. On that note, I was going to see if anybody wanted Sasha. I know he could shoot maybe for like a second round pick or something. You know what? I'm okay with this. OKC will give me a Dallas or OKC best of those two first, which isn't going to be good probably. And some scrub named Adam for Terrence Mann, which by the way, Terrence Mann's contract is expiring. So it's not like I'm sabotaging them or anything. Um, I mean, OKC is not really feeding for players, but I'm not going to complain. I'll take it. And you know what? Sasha to the Wizards for Eugene. I don't know if the Wizards really is this dude. This dude's not even young. So, um, you know, 
Sure. Whatever. But basically, just leveraged all the assets that made made sense that we possibly could. And yes, I'm gonna have to re-sign Kuminga this offseason and Moody at that, because Moody and Kuminga were the same draft class. And you know what? If I'm remembering correctly, I feel like Moody asked for a ton of money in 2K. I don't know if it'll be on here, but yeah, he's right there. Which is annoying, but uh we'll deal with it. And that might also set us back even more. But, but yeah, playing this well right now, realistically, I can't I can't make no more trades. So, you know, we're having a little bit of a bounce back season as we lose three straight games. Jokic wins MVP, Rob Dillingham, Rookie of the Year. Man, thank God we'll have a pick this year. I don't know where exactly, but whatever. And yeah, I will say, shout out to Willie Green. Made some of the most confusing co coaching decisions of my life I've ever seen in the playing game today against the Lakers. Uh, not all his fault, but like there was a play where he subbed in Dyson Daniels for defense, and then Dyson Daniels immediately left D'Angelo Russell wide open for three on some garbage help defense. And he also benched Brandon Ingram down the entire end of the game, who wasn't playing well, but it's like, Ah, Zion was injured and he was going to let Trey Murphy and CJ McCollum man the whole ship. I know Ingram was just injured too, but like, damn, we had no all NBA players. I honestly thought Steph would have made it considering the circumstances. Zach Eady makes all rookie second team. That's what we like to see. And we are the sixth seed playing against the Dallas Mavericks who won 50 games. Obviously, this isn't going to be easy. Can I see actually... That, that is, and it's funny because this is a type of series where, you know, playoffs coming up and everything. I actually could have used Gary Payton, who I traded, but I'll take what I got back from. Okay, Curry's got 78 perimeter defense. That's not terrible. Oh, damn. The dude I signed from free agency, the little 72 overall rookie dude. So it, might be, it might be a good signing. He's got some defense and three-point shot. Maybe maybe down the line, he'll play. Yeah, so for this series, I have an idea of how I'm going to do this. Just because I don't want to even go into the simcast with Luka guarded by Curry. I'm going to have Luka guarded by Draymond, Curry guarding Kyrie, and Pete. DJ Washington guarded by Kuminga, which will leave the small forward to be guarded by, um, if it was Josh Green or whoever it was. Oh, it's Zachary, the rookie. He'll be guarded by Poe Giemski. That's a really interesting pick for them, Zachary Rissacker. Yeah, for this series, it is what it is. We ball. Honestly, I'm probably going to let Sim, I mean, uh, let the CPU run stuff in this. I don't think I'm going to play. It's been a little while since I've just let CPU run stuff. And screw it, 130 left. Let's see how this team operates on paper. Or, well, not on paper, actually. The direct opposite. Screw it, I'm about to clean my glasses, but I'll try and, you know, just watch the game anyways. Curry, what a pass down. Kuminga gets fouled. And I actually saw the uh, the roster change Curry's jump shot as well as Kuminga's. So, Steph's, for some reason, Steph's jump shot is hell the time this year when you actually play with it. Kuminga able to hit both. Luka back up the other way. Guarded by Dre, big Dre. And that this is a nice little pick and roll duo. Oh, pull up, fade away. Luka, that's off. Rebound by Lively. Back out. Luka wide open. And that is good. Now, that's not good. Uh, that's not good defense. So the worst type of defense. You know what I should do, though? I should. I should low-key start playing this like these like a coach when I rebuild and like makes make defensive subs and things that oh my god curry oh my god curry oh oh my goodness a beautiful shot by him Luca back right on Draymond there you go Dre there you go Dre oh that's a beautiful spin though hey, that's Luca that's Luca that's how he would get a bucket too basically just misdirection you know a little if not to use this again but herky jerky moves uh and the lob up to Kuminga wow the lob up to uh Mark Cuban in the front row actually all right Luca thankfully they're not giving Kyrie the ball because you know he's got to buy Curry it's not ideal and Luca drop what what are we doing wait what what look at this just just look hold on I'm, I'm gonna talk so you know what I'm saying L just take a gander what the hell is that this man trace jackson davis got his ankle broken by brandon brandon pojemski just gave up that dunk because he pushed trace and made him not play defense that's insane especially after draymond damn near got a steal for that to happen and it wasn't even like trace was trying to get back on the fast break like an idiot or something no he dead just got kicked in the shin by his teammate but he started doing a tiktok dance curry baseline bump back left curry Ooh, that's ugly and it's bad and it's off okay Back out. Draymond will shoot the three. That is off. That was a terrible decision. Oh my God. Oh, down by down by one. You know, this is this is a good. I don't want to simcast and watch every game of the series. But this is a good place to see how our team performs. And let's just say they're not performing. You know what? Screw it. Let's let's get in a full shooting lineup. I'm gonna take control. Uh yeah, bring in Clay Thompson. He could still chuck some threes. They gave Wiggins his three-pointer back. I still wouldn't want to prioritize him because I'd rather prioritize the young guys. But honestly, I'm gonna leave Draymond in just so we have a big man just in case we want to get off re offensive rebound or something. Hopefully my subs still go through, even though I went back to the middle portion. Uh it would be kind of embarrassing if not. No, they did. Clay's in. Nice. Curry kind of gets some room. Oh my god, he had all the room in the world for like half a second there. They pass it in. Clay takes a close shot. Rebound put back by Kuma. 
Kuminga. Okay, I guess. I sub in Clay for threes and he takes a, a, a floater. Kyrie at the line. Will he give us a chance? No, 100% free throws. And they make they make the sub again. They subbed back in Trace. They're going to call their timeout though. And I'm just going to make the sub back because yeah, they should have make a a portion like that where you could just coach if you get what i'm saying like they should make it that you can jump in and coach who's man garuba has a 85 three-pointer what the hell screw it i'm putting in moody for draymond green we're going straight three-pointers this is the thing right you know in these scenarios they always like dribble the ball back out and force threes so if i'm gonna have someone take the three you know kuminga is our worst bet but even then that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world come on give us a shot pass in to pojemski he'll take the screen go right go nowhere i guess pat just pass out to curry just get curry okay moody for he gets blocked he got blocked and that's game he fouls timmy four years later that's game you know what i'd rather him take that draymond would have got blocked too so we'll look how'd we do in that one uh luca i mean we played pretty well we just lost just hope it gets better down the line one minute 49 to go you know what if we lose this game and I'm jumping in, yes, I'm watching this. If we lose this game, I'm, I'm simulating through game unless we come back and win or something. I, I'm not even going to watch another one. I think Curry. Yeah, they got Chris Paul at the one right now. Oh, my God. Is Draymond not in? No, he is. Oh, Curry fouled and one on the three. Kyrie Irving fouls him. And OK, they, they put in the starters just now anyway. So that's good because I didn't want Chris Paul guarding a small forward. Luca Draymond played. I mean, obviously, it's Draymond played great defense. He's probably one of the better defenders I'd probably want to put on Luca since he's you know also strong like that's kind of an issue sometimes with defenders on 2k against fantastic uh scorers is that they're not strong so then they can't guard them anyways because a lot of times in 2k they just overpower them physically curry fades away from three that's off but what a great rebound by trace back over to brandon and they're setting the curry the screens for curry curry gets it Curry drives left. Curry pump fakes. He'll take a fadeaway midi. That's off. Rebound by Luca. Luca running the back up. Curry picks up the ball. That's not ideal. And definitely not ideal. Luca bucket. 58 seconds. Curry goes right. Goes all the way. And no foul, but he hits the layup. Thought there was going to be a foul on that. I feel like there usually is. Maybe these sliders make less fouls called. I have no clue. Oh, Washington for three. That is off. But the rebound, easy rebound by Gafford. That man, Trace, was all the way behind him. And Trace definitely got some badges this offseason because he went up in overall, so he had to have developed some badges. Like, There's no way he doesn't. And Curry trying to cook. Just go left. Oh, he had the left. Step back. Oh, my. He'll pull the three over Luka. That is good. Steph Curry, come on. That's what you do. Hey, if we're going to be, you know what I'm saying, riding your coattails going into 37 years old, 37 years of age, you old bastard, you better do some, which he is. Shout out also to, I saw uh, Cameron Brink, who was the number two overall pick in WNBA draft was uh is Curry's god sister so like his godparents child that's kind of crazy that like also too just like so coincidentally and like by godparents like they're not oh my god that's a crazy shot uh, they're not technically related like they're not blood related but she just so happened to be a six foot three six foot four WNBA player and I think I saw that their parents knew each other because of Steph's mom so it's not like it was like you know Dell's friend that was in the NBA or something Luca goes right all the way and foul and one the worst possible scenario Draymond Green fouls him on the layup and he'll hit the free throw and just like that it is a tied game with 12.4 to go we will probably have the last shot that is literally the worst thing possible because you don't even force him to take a tough shot obviously it's a tough layup but you, you didn't have to foul all right curry guarded by luca which honestly is probably their best defensive matchup with this lineup in the game for curry and four seconds three seconds curry fades away from three and he hits it steph curry no time left one second luca full court oh my god steph curry with multiple huge shots and that is game that is game for game two we take one in dallas that's pretty important this, this is actually you know this this serves the same purpose as it does when i uh when i play with the team sometimes that you like build like a relationship with the team a little bit and i'm saying like oh snap seeing draymond play as good defense as he is it's like i don't want to trade him no more i didn't really want to anyways but nor did i think it was rational and wow we would have it oh no nope. we actually ran away with it a little bit in the end and we are going to go up 2-1 on the Dallas Mavericks. Kuminga with 26 and Luka with 8 for 18, 19 points, which is good, but not Luka good. Okay, the, he, he heard me and he came back and was probably Luka good. Uh, no, actually, 15 on 3 for 14, but they still won. That's actually a huge blown opportunity. And it's actually because Pogiemski shot 1 for 11. Now, I would say that he literally almost, he had one more made shot than Clay did today. All right, I believe this is game 5 or 6. I think it's game 5. I don't know. Hey 
we're down by three with 147 to go. And I know this is just first round fight, but, and this is the other thing too, that, I mean, one way or the other, you know, father time is undefeated and we're starting to get to the end of the row with this team. Curry's definitely not retiring anytime soon though, because he wouldn't have let me sign him to a contract extension if he was retiring this season. Luca fakes the pump, uh, fakes the fade in the post, and it is uh, their ball off on Trace. He get, tips it. Putting Draymond on Luca is huge, though. He steps back. He tries to go left. Draymond clamping him up, and what a move! But he misses. Uh, that's a much tougher shot than he normally get. Hands it off to Curry. Curry goes right, stops. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Like a lot of times, you don't even notice that little circle on the court. Oh my God, I thought he was going to hit that for a second. Pass over to Kyrie. Oh no, this isn't. Yeah, give it back to Luca. Come on. Oh, Luca, step back. Never mind. Don't give it to him. Don't. Do not give him the ball. Oh, that's six. Damn. Yeah, this is game five, series tied 2 2. If we lose another one, it's a good fight, but how much fight we got in us? You know, how much more? Oh my, Curry, step back. Oh, he had him in the air. He could have taken that Draymond fall away three. He misses. And Luca fouled. They just stopped the break for no reason. Down by six, 44 seconds. Pass in. Tim Hardaway's got it. Pass over to the corner. Gafford did not shoot the. Oh, that's kind of interesting because they weren't fouling, but then they fouled Daniel Gafford when he got the ball. That's actually kind of interesting because, I mean, he's 70% free throw. It's not like he's terrible or something, but they decided to try and hack a center. And there you go. You, you, you got one out of them, but. This game is over with probably anyways. You sick bastard. Curry left, pulls the three. That's good. You could probably tell his jumper's a little bit different. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. Kyrie's getting an MVP chance. I don't know what he's got in this game, but he's probably dominating us. Uh, yeah, let me just get out of here. Oh, they're they're both dominating. Uh, actually, a pretty a very high scoring game from both teams. And that's it. Screw it. I'm gonna just sim through one game, and we tied it. We tied it with a 152 117 win. 33 from Pojemski. He's been huge for us this season. Him and Kuminga, man, they had to step up. The only two like super young. Him and that actually the only three pretty young pieces we have all made huge impacts this season in game seven didn't change anything just hop right back into it down by four down by three uh they're, they're taking some free throws 212 left we're about to be down by five probably or not never mind down by four and they have the ball this is big time for us right here game seven in dallas the dynasty on the line again luca behind the back luca bumping and going nowhere and draymond playing fantastic defense oh my god and luca is he still gonna score no Draymond Green. It is so essential to have a good defensive player. My God. Draymond layup. Oh, I thought he was going to get an N1. That would have been a perfect, uh, you know, end to end play for him. Just hit some free throws for the love of God. Thank you. 90%. Damn. Draymond's second one is good. 91%. He's just even more locked in. All right. Yo, it is crazy. Like, and obviously, well, actually, I don't even have to check. I was about to say Draymond's strength has got to be high as hell, but he's literally a power forward. Of course it is. Luca brings it back to the three point line. He's going to get the screen from Lively. Luca step back. That might be a bucket. It's not. Rebound by Kuminga. Kuminga blowout dribble. Handoff Curry. He had some room, but he's not going to force it. Curry goes left all the way. Oh, hands it off. He had the whole lane. He is tweaking. Oh, handoff. Draymond gets it off the screen. Why would you want Draymond to get that? I'm not sure. Pogiemski's about to have to prove himself real quick. Pogiemski to the basket he gets blocked it's a good little take but not not good enough pj is dribbling nowhere is pj about to force some garbage nope he hands it back out to luca luca guarded by kuminga size wise this isn't bad but it's also not you know he's not some sort of defensive menace or something okay tim hardaway is about to run a pick and roll he pump fakes twice takes a garbage three but it's not garbage for him and you know what that seems about right for tim hardaway jr that man tim will hit some crazy shots from time to time he hits it makes it a five point game 48 seconds to go yeah you literally can't do anything about that one also are they starting tim over zachary again i think they yeah they, they are zachary was starting when the series started draymond will pass into the curry we oh uh, idiots called in the timeout draymond passing to brandon hands it off kuminga back to pogiemski curry got some room for three and that is good two point deficit for the mavs or sorry two point lead actually and obviously we're not gonna foul we're not stupid not enough at least Luka goes right, spin. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Luka Doncic and one. And that might do it. We'll take our last time out because we wasted one like idiots. Steph from God knows where. He bought a shooter from Timbuktu. Oh, he got a quick bucket. But once again, a miracle would have to happen. Luka hits one and I'm out of here. Yep, it's over. It's been real playoff run. 129, 125 loss. Hey, we showed good promise this season. I will give us that. But it's definitely time to blow it up.
And I'm not going to lie. Draymond's old. We're going to, especially seeing how, how well he played against Luka, we're going to need another Draymond Green type of player, which I know those, those don't come around every single day. But 89 perimeter defense with 84 strength, movement, enforcer, clamps, all this stuff just on silver even is insanely, insanely, what's it called, impactful. We're going to need defensive players. And overall, yeah, it, it's time to, uh, damn. All right. We're, we're still, once again, I have been met with. And look, we almost took out the team that made it and won the final. That would have been crazy. We still might have lost to someone who knows, but we almost did it. Damn, that's kind of crazy to think about. All right, LeBron's out of here. Um, I could overturn Chris Paul's retirement, but dog, he's 40 years old. Honestly, you know what? Let, let's keep it realistic. Russell Westbrook would not retire this early, and neither would Brooke Lopez, I don't think, if you're still getting rotational minutes. So yeah, see you CP3. Draft lottery. We haven't stole any picks, so we're just going to have our non-lottery pick, which is the 22nd. Also, shout out to Michael Stauffer. Pretty good first season pretty good all right and just like that so draymond's got a one plus one right now this is the thing like i've said before oh man both of these guys have one plus one the thing is i have to get kuminga back there's no ifs ands or buts about it but if i could fancy a team on a on some god knows what and you know sign god knows what and you know what actually i could see a team being interested in wiggins now with just a year and some chains left on his contract and look at that this is just a basis for what we can potentially offer in free agency right now now this is going to get eaten up by by uh kuminga's contract but if we weren't to have to sign kuminga we have an extra 20 million in the salary cap at the least right now because zach levine's contract is you know 20 million more i think i'm gonna get a wiggins trade done but i'm gonna wait a second i believe just because in the light of realism i don't want to give another team I, i'll be honest if there's a attractive enough thing i can do in free agency i'll probably trade him but i'm not gonna like sign jason tatum to this team with you know no hope right now or something like that i also i forgot clay's expiring literally as of right now the only players we have under contract are curry draymond trey Shack. And, and Andrew Wiggins and Zach Eadie. Fantastic. And to add to that list will be whoever the hell we pick 22nd. Now, this is the thing. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, this is going to have to be a big free agency, even in, even on a smaller sense. Like, we're going to have to get rid of Wiggins' contract, even if I got to give up whatever or, or, you know, figure out something in my mind that makes sense. Because with how good the team was this past season, I can't give up right now, right? We're going to have to ride out Curry's contract until he expires, until he retires, right? But we're also still in cap hell, and I still don't want to mitigate the future. We're in the same situation as last year. Nothing has changed, but it's also still a pretty favorable situation, especially considering that we were able to have another good season. With that being said, though, I say that because I want to trade up in the draft. Like, I want to hypothetically trade Draymond and just, you know, to a team that, like, has a higher lottery pick, but hypothetically would want to be better than us next season. Like, imagine him next to Zion or or just give them to the Lakers or the Knicks or something like that. And you know what, though? The only thing is, uh, I think I'm going to trade him. And the reason why is because unlike Wiggins, I do genuinely think that teams would want Draymond right now. And you know what? Maybe with that being said, I can actually just package them. Oh, damn. Did they trade Bradley Beal for Zach Levine? All right. It's, it hurts to do. I know we were the sixth seed last year. I know we almost beat the damn champions. But just because, what, like I was saying, I feel like as a good GM, you have to make tough moves when they're the toughest. Draymond Green, 35 years old, before you hit any sort of regression and after you having great times with us over here, I'm going to trade him to the Sacramento Kings, where ironically, he fits really well I, I was actually just looking at their team and they have keegan murray at small forward right now with trey lyles at the four they also have some of their guys they're they're you know and uh they've got their best guys under contract and you know what, what does sabonis get the most flack for defense so you get Draymond, put him down there next to Sabonis. I know Keegan Murray is pretty solid at defense as well. If anything, though, 2K specifically, he's got an 86 perimeter, 72 interior. So Draymond could bring more of an interior imposing threat against other bigs, whereas Sabonis doesn't. And we're going to get Terrence Shannon Jr., who was their 24th pick last year. He's got 78 perimeter defense, solid player. Obviously, Sacramento got to strike the iron while it's hot. Their guys are all in their prime. Ours aren't. So uh, we'll take what we can get. Draymond Green, salute. It's been real the era the dynasty is officially over i needed i couldn't come out of this draft with just no damn 22nd pick and and this is a good draft too so hopefully we get some good players with this also andrew wiggins i just want to see
see what I could possibly do with this. I mean, all right, I got two or maybe maybe more, but as of right now, I got two options with Wiggins, right? So as you see right here, the Heat are trying to offer me picks for him. I'm not even going to take these picks. I don't even feel legally obligated to do so, right? Now, my thought is the Heat, Jimmy Butler is a free agent this offseason. If he doesn't re-sign with the Heat, I'm going to offer them Andrew Wiggins. If I see that he's go trying to go somewhere else immediately in free agency, I'm going to trade them Andrew Wiggins. You will have him because you want him for some reason. So screw it. it maybe I'll even just take a first or maybe I'll literally take, a, you know, three seconds or something like that. You know, I did see this Utah deal. I was thinking about it. I don't think it really makes sense for their roster. I was looking at their team. And then the other one, if the Lakers are signing nobody after retirement of LeBron, I will definitely take Gabe Vincent or whatever. Honestly, uh, you could even keep him. I'll take Maxwell Lewis. I don't give it. But we have to wait for the till a draft for those. I'm fine with our picks that we have. They're cool. Hopefully, you know, post Curry, uh, you know, before and after Curry or whatever, BC and Cooper flag goes number one to do. And honestly, I'm just going to actually screw. Let's see if there's any interesting trades or anything like that. Uh, so far, no, nothing at all. Ian Jackson just got picked. That would have been a really good pick for us. Damn, that's tough. That's really tough. Oh boy, Jaleel Bethea comparison clay thompson also the only dude left that's kind of so damn amari blue draymond green comparisons but Jaden acquaintance seven foot center now granted he's not a shooter so we'd be playing a very old school team offense because we'd have him and trace jackson playing um he's a big man but he is a real good defender and rebounder so that could be interesting he's got all nba potential supposedly if but they would fall to 22 that'd probably be our best plan of action but i don't know who who falls who doesn't i'm gonna take the chance on that i'm gonna take Jaden here and then hope that uh the other dude falls to the next pick oh damn basala bam bagayoka was oh there goes jaleel damn you know what i'm gonna take this dude hugo gonzalez with our next pick just also because it says he has a plus three point scoring so maybe he's the next clay thompson who knows i'm kind of disappointed though just because damn dylan brooks for the 23rd pick <laughs> that's funny i would have liked uh that i would have liked jaleel a lot I, I wanted to take the chance on the center though but i, I do think it'll work out nicely for us and eh, whatever uh, do we have second round picks i don't even remember no no because it, it would say to sim to them all right no second round picks Jaden acquaintance is a 74 jaleel but was a 76 that kind of sucked and i definitely would have taken ian jackson if he fell one more pick which also really sucked but we'll be all right hey hugo 74 overall not bad clay thompson yep i'll be declining your team option we'll be seeing you later buddy and we do have a a, a swell amount you know still a lot of time to go oh is moses moody not oh no there he is okay i didn't scroll down oh damn i didn't i didn't offer qualifying to this dude i like this dude oh damn oh okay jimmy butler is gonna re-sign with the heat it looks like jalen brunson is gonna get a super max from the knicks kyrie irving obviously is gonna stay with the mavs and from there kuminga's already got okay a trash contract from the pelicans which he's not gonna take so that leaves us with a second to play right so hypothetically, yeah, we would need to get rid of Wiggins contract to, to have, you know, working room in free agency. Also, thankfully, Moody's only expected to get seven million, six million. So that's good. Maybe I can, you know, wait that out. Maybe hopefully nobody will offer him too soon. And then Clay, if Clay leaves, Clay leaves. We don't care at this point. So who is it that I said? Um, I said if the Lakers weren't signing anybody else, I would look to try and finesse. And so far, all I see is that which they can do anyways. The Lakers are offering to re-sign D'Angelo Russell. And you you know what on that note let's go ahead and talk to uh the lakers i don't even want the second player if you guys will just be kind enough to give me actually hey i'll take a slight finesse if you want carter knox nah actually i'm not gonna take a young player from them they need to they need to develop their players i feel a little bit too grimy but yeah since ad still in like the later stages of his prime they're not exactly just gonna give up immediately and they still got reeves Rui, and they're about to re-sign d-lo yeah if we could just do gabe vincent for andrew wiggins two second round picks with him just because i feel like taking him from you and uh you're not can use them anyways because they never signed second round pick uh can we have a deal thank you all right see you wiggins it's been real with that being said i don't have any insane names i'm looking to sign i just wanted some flexibility um obviously like for example Cade cunningham we're not going to get him out of detroit fred van vliet don't really know if that moves any needles i could try stealing jalen johnson from the hawks that'd be real nice man our team is gutted like really looking at it too because Draymond's gone clay's in the free agency and chris paul retired yeah our team is just gutted right now and i traded wiggins so that's that's, that's the whole bench. Moody's also in free agency. So that's the entire bench. Except we still got Zach Eady though. Now here's something I could think about, right? How about this though? And I know I didn't trade Wiggins there, but what if I'm like, hey, Jimmy Butler, Miami ain't been doing no good for you. Let's just form a little Steph Curry duo for the last few years of your career. You know, and I know I know Miami has been technically doing good for you, but you know what I mean. Where did they finish this past year in the playoffs? I have no clue. Did they even make it? I wouldn't know. Okay, they made it. Six seed. Like what if you could work, you know, do a little couple dribble handoffs with Steph 
Steph Curry. You know, like I said, I wouldn't sign Tatum, but for another 35 year old man, it might be of intrigue. Although this is the thing. He's a little bit too far out of tax bracket. He would only leave us with 10 million, which is kind of insane because we're really not paying anybody at this point. Just step. How much does uh, Kuminga plan on getting paid? 33, 30 million. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because Jimmy wants 50. But if I'm doing the math correctly, I think Miami offered him 44 a year. So we would be instantly beating them. But I don't, I don't think. Nah, I'm good on it. Is there any young players I could snag up from other teams? Maybe Trey Murphy. Yeah, I think I had him in one of my recent videos, but John Isaac would be perfect for this team considering that we just traded Draymond. He would literally be the quintessential perfect player. Clippers offering him. I might need to offer him first day if we're going to go for like the lower tier role player route. And you know what? Let, let's not even mince. Let, let's not even just waste any time here. Can I trade Gabe Vincent, please? Hey, you know what? admittedly unrealistic and this is after going through a bunch of teams to see if they realistically want Gabe Vincent uh, you always got to hate on the Thunder a little bit so they don't become too good I'm gonna take an OKC first round pick in 2029 for Gabe Vincent and a second round pick honestly I wouldn't even want it I I was actually it was a bunch of teams offering me a first round pick for Gabe and I was going to just go to them and take a second round pick instead just so I can get them off my team for nothing you know be like oh rationally this team could maybe use them uh Thunder no they don't need him at all I'm just hating so yeah, there you go. You gotta let me get one of them off. Come on. Anyways, with that being said, so looking at the team, this is how I'm planning it out right now. So Steph obviously is the PG. Ojemski will still start at the two. He made good improvement last year. Hopefully he continues to improve. Obviously Kuminga is gonna start at the three. This dude Terrence Shannon is going into the, his third year or his second year. Maybe he improves. He actually averaged 12 points last year. Maybe he can be our backup too. Who knows? We also are going to be re-signing Moses Moody more than likely. I don't know if Clay makes it back onto the roster, but odds are. Uh, now, big man wise, I'm going to probably finesse. I saw Peyton Watson out there and I saw Jonathan Isaac out there. Either one or both works. They could be our power forward rotation. And then on either Jaden or Zach Eady, one of them could be in rotation, one of them not. Who cares? We'll figure it out. So that's what it's looking like right now. And then I'll sign um probably, you know, a uh, a Trey Mann or something like that, or a TJ McConnell to be Curry's backup, or Bones Highland or Dennis Schroeder. But uh, what I'm getting at though is that I don't think there's a big time free agent signing to make right now. Shoot, un unless the uh the Rockets are the Rockets about to give up on Sungoon? I think they're they're trying to offer Jim me but if they don't get jimmy they're just gonna re-sign him so no that's probably not what's gonna happen all right so i've signed peyton watson jonathan isaac and um jonathan kuminga i also front loaded all of their contracts which is probably gonna actually help in this because we don't have any huge contract players going past the curry era so if this rebuild takes a bit longer we might have money when we oftentimes wouldn't in these videos i made another two nice signings one being moody back on a five-year cheap deal and uh davion mitchell I like this one a lot. I signed him to a two-year deal with a with a uh, team option on the third year, which is a is a bit paying a much paying paying a bit much for him. Oh, also, he is restricted. Okay, cool. They, they didn't they didn't match it. Um, it is paying a bit much for him. But my thought is, first of all, he might be priced highly because he might have some decent potential, and I feel like he usually does in 2K. He is 26. I will say that that's not that young. But his shot tendency is at 40. He is really really inefficient. Um, currently, but his shot tendency is at 40, and I'm just thinking like, can I like tell him to not be stupid or something i don't know like just what what's going on there maybe he could actually be and you know what hmm. now i'm not gonna lie well who's gonna be big this season is moody's gonna have to take a huge uh a huge roll off the bench probably that's gonna be the biggest change this season aside from not having draymond you know what? i'm gonna lob schroeder a one year as well just because chris paul was a really good playmaker off the bench oh wait no nah, do i do it ah no nah, no nah, no nah. give tj mcconnell actually because tj mcconnell's a minimum contract guy anyways i'm gonna do a two-year minimum for tj mcconnell damn 20 players no way we'd have that many players good god oh, with that we have to renounce our rights to clay thompson which honestly i'm fine with that and that's day three of three so that is officially here's the team they were talking about we'd have 20 players but i only see 13 i don't know what the hell they're talking about you know what one last signing clay thompson welcome back on a one plus one with a team option and actually if he's just gonna be sitting out around here anyways the player i was thinking about signing instead of clay was kcp i actually want to promote our young players to start so i don't plan on playing either one of these guys nor am i gonna you know just finesse their contracts or anything either though but um and i actually i i don't want to give kcp a straight up two-year deal i'll do a one plus one minimum clay signs and actually we might lose casey oh no there he is that'll be our last two deals oh there goes a bunch of restricted free agents pissing me off that's great hey, this man usman gruba has been begging for minutes i'm not gonna lie he keeps on getting better and signing those damn contracts he might he might get some minutes this season i'm not even joking he got 90 plus rebounding 
75 plus on interior and perimeter defense and an 86 three-point shot i flipped three of the dudes that i didn't even want for charles bassey and i'm gonna trade him for a brooklyn first round pick just because bro i i literally don't want these players and i also don't want to release them i don't want to just have money on my books for no reason okay just pissing me off with that if you're wondering why i'm trading them is because i'm over the you know amount of amount of players i'm allowed so i don't want to just you know what i'm saying now, i'm be honest uh with usman gruba's resurgence i might trade clay or insurgents i guess not resurgence whatever at this point though i'm actually genuinely excited for the future i know it's taking a lot of a uh, foundation but yeah oh damn wait hold on can i see the progression real quick terrence shannon you didn't get better at all yeah i'm sorry buddy yeah it's been real i know i got you in that king's trade with the 12th pick with draymond but uh hey i don't even want your first round pick go ahead and donate him back to the kings enjoy your time see ya so i'm gonna force davion mitchell to shoot a pretty decent amount more not a ton but 73 is not bad so it's low-key tough because we have a lot of players who i feel like are deserving of a few minutes literally almost everybody i was just talking about playing garuba zach Eady was actually pretty decent last season mcconnell uh not really he's more of an assurance thing just in case davion sucks and then kcp what's crazy is they're trying to actually start him but i don't even i literally said i don't even want to play him now, the thing is, Jaden Quaintance, he had all NBA potential, same with Hugo, but I don't want to not play them and then stunt their growth, you know? So I want to play both of them. Obviously, Peyton Watson, that's a, you know, great defensive, huge player, whatever. And this obviously gives us the full one through five off the bench. It's just, if things aren't going as well or whatever, if we get to the playoffs, genuinely speaking, we could make it to the playoffs and then I just decide to play KCP. Damn, I might just play him right now, honestly. Yeah, let me get four KCP spot minutes per game, per game just because I also don't want to not play the starters enough. This right here looks about right. This looks pretty good. We'll go with that to start the season. Uh, oh, we just got smoked by 30. Damn, the Clippers got Jalen Suggs. It's crazy as I saw him and I'm like, no way the Magic would let him go. They let him go. You know what? I want to make early changes. Like, I mean, early events evaluations okay so first few weeks in we are 20th in offensive rating and like 12th in defensive rating so we're just not good but we're seventh in the conference yeah davion mitchell i don't know what's wrong with him like 35 percent from the field i don't i don't get it look at his shooting stats 89 mid-range 77 three can we do like a like a quick just look at what the hell is wrong with him yeah no i have no clue oh oh i know what it is wait wait, wait hold on what's his offensive consistency because no joke he might have to just get traded now i 36 Oh my God. Holy hell. Yeah, you can't stick around here for three years. We're going to act like, um, you know, uh, uh, he got in a fight in the locker room or something. I don't know. You know, what's funny is I, I genuinely am seeking out a first round pick for him. And there's only two offered, one from the Thunder again and one from the Timberwolves. Timberwolves, I mean, they got Russell Westbrook and Mike Conley, but they're both old as dirt. So I guess maybe you try and plan for the future past them and get a point guard because they're probably both retiring this season actually russell westbrook's retiring okay mike conley is. so uh yeah here you go here's a point guard top three protected first round pick we'll take kelly olenic and his expiring contract see you davion what mitchell has been real i can't deal with that damn offensive because this is with that being said that adds up opens up a few more minutes and pretty much just give him to tj mcconnell who's actually crazily enough considered our sixth man right now actually on that note yeah moses moody does not shoot enough he has a 53 shot tendency i feel like he he very clearly has to be the sixth man i'm gonna give him a 76 i think that's fair i also saw the two rookies are cooking right right now so that's good hopefully we'll see if that's hey look we lost to the clippers by 40 game one we just beat them by like 50 almost game two so that's good and just smoked the lakers twice oh great jalen brown for steph curry and clay thompson offers I, unironically this actually isn't this is a fantastic trade considering the timelines but it's actually kind of interesting too because celtics are like hey this isn't working we want steph to be with jalen uh, with jason tatum even if it's only for three years speaking of uh steph and contracts oh trace jackson davis will resign does this get rid of the last year on his team option i don't know but you know what I'll, I'll lock him up regardless hopefully it doesn't get rid of that team it, it might it might though uh okay no it didn't cool so we just accepted that and signed him for longer he's real solid so he's not gonna be going anywhere whether it's center or backup center or power forward or anything moses moody what the hell is going on 34 percent from the field does he have a trash offensive consistency too my god no 79 he just sucks what's crazy is i actually i didn't pay close attention but i noticed it once the season started he didn't improve either he 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 might have capped out too he only went up by like one or none at all i don't even know so he's another player that's 
that's up for the jury you know honestly on that note don't shoot um you're not the sixth man anymore shoot i might get i might give the opportunities to hugo gonzalez for all i know don't don't shoot us out of games like right here one for seven if anything maybe i'm holding us back not really probably not because he probably just plays some minutes with the bench but poe Jemski would probably be the perfect bench player but at the same time we also probably need him in the starting lineup he averages 18 points but hypothetically I could do what they wanted and just start KCP. I'm just not sure, sure where I would spawn minutes from because I like all the players in our rotation right now. I actually just don't like Moody. Man, Moody is playing trash. And it's not like two. It's not like, here, they, perfect. There goes Isaac. Perfect example. It's not like, you know, Isaac, elite defender. Moody, when it comes to playing games, whatever, he, he doesn't play defense. So how does that benefit us? Or at least he's not some sort of elite defender or nothing. And you know what? On that note, we got to keep a short leash. Moses Moody. No, this isn't the trade I'm doing, by the way. Um, I just want to note that uh, the Thunder keep on offering me this this package right here with this first round pick in Gabe Vincent. And I don't want to do it because why would I beef up the Thunder even more? You know what I mean? Unless this is like a, no, it's their pick. So they're going to be good. I, I don't want their pick. I actually, throw Kelly Olynyk in here just in case. Never mind. Kelly Olynyk just brings me back worse assets. The trade I was going to do is right here for Milwaukee. Norman Powell's $20 million expiring contract and a swap worse pick in 2028. Honestly, with how the Bucks, with how the Bucks and Portland tend to progress, well, Portland actually gets pretty decent. This might not be a terrible pick, but Moody will actually be one of the better players overall wise in this team. And it's a pretty formidable upgrade from Norman Powell at 73 overall. So um, it's, if anything, I, I damn near want more. Damn, that's low key interesting. They added in two more picks for the chance at KCP. But that can't happen because when I, and obviously it's not really that realistic, but when I make this trade, I want KCP to get more minutes. So I don't know if that's, ideal. you know what though? I, unironically, can I get, aside from just like messing around, can I grab whatever pick this is? I want picks the sooner the better. Or can I grab the one this year instead? Hey, I'm sorry it has to end like this. And you know what? You're probably going to get trade time over there, uh, playing time over there. You probably are. Clay Thompson. It's been real. It's been fun, but it ain't been real fun. For another Milwaukee first round pick they asked for, or they, they added in for Clay Thompson, I guess. Sure. I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. Yep. It's been real. Clay, we'll be seeing you, buddy. Instead of just sitting on the bench, he's probably, you know, it's one of those, man. It's just, it's business is business. And uh, now we got Norm Powell's trash contract, Kelly Olenek's trash contract, which will both be expiring. It'll give us a good a good chunk of money this offseason, I guess, or whatever. And KCP, you get your minutes up. And honestly, we're just going to beef up the starters minutes even more. Oh, Jemski, I want to see you with the bench a lot. So hopefully that happens. And now they're trying to trade him the game after. No, I, I like that. I like that a lot. So we kind of weeded out the trash, hopefully keep on building building at least at the very least our bench pieces through the draft i like how Jaden quaintance or whatever the hell his name is is playing so far and him and uh hugo it's funny because those are like they feel like the most like average warrior picks of all time i just seen a tweet that said let clay thompson like the beam he earned it hey my plans are working very well right now so the overall team building aspect you know having isaac replace draymond poe Jemski literally just fill in and just filling in a decent bench around steph Wait, shoot tj mcconnell getting this many minutes in the year of 2026 or whatever it is. Hugo Gonzalez, KCP, Quaintance, and Peyton Watson at the four off the bench. Barely all of them getting a few minutes. I feel like the only thing you could really say arguing to need better off of here, which honestly might just be Hugo, is a six man. I don't know what his dribbling capability is. Okay, yeah, he's he's an above average ball handler, especially uh, I have him at the small forward right now too. He was drafted as a shooting guard, but he's six six, so I was like, whatever. He, he's pretty he's pretty good. Doesn't have badges yet, but he will after this season. This is gonna definitely help his potential, I would say, this year. Um, if anything, I should be giving him even more minutes with how well he's playing. And then Quaintance, I don't know why he's shooting threes. I guess he has a sixty. He could end up a pretty this could be these two guys could be really really good for the future of this team because if he can get like a 75 three-pointer plus being as good as he is defensively offensively down the line yeah i know i'm way too deep in but that's fun it's fun like that so screw it curry's averaging 27 we got him back on on his bs trying to you know super duper lead the team this season and then poe Jemski, obviously that's the big three right now isaac here not efficient right now shooting 39 uh basically 40 percent but it's not what we pay you for, let's be honest. Zach Eady in the G League. I'll be honest. Um, I actually might. I'm going to look at a trade for Zach Eady before the offseason because, shoot, teams probably know he was good last season. I just don't have any room for him anymore. They actually quant they, they classify him as a defensive anchor, which is very random. Like, that's not a oh, 78 defense yet. Yeah, never mind. Nothing about him screams defensive anchor, so I'm not sure where that came from. Hey, I think I found a trade that makes perfect sense. Yeah, Miami isn't running a backup center at all. And when I throw Eady on the market, hit them, in the war uh, them in the Nuggets are actually two of the only teams 
teams that are offering me a deal for him for a first round pick without us having to give up anything additionally. So screw it. I'll take it. You know, it's actually pretty fair. So I'll take that. We kind of like blackballed him this season for some reason, but because, you know, that's just how it went. Game is game. And honestly, anybody need Kelly Olynyk in a role? If, if somebody uh, see like this is I'm about to say, because I don't I don't know if teams will actually offer me anything for him. You know what? Dallas for Maxi Kleber. He's basically just better Maxi Kleber or Kleba, whatever. And uh, a tra a super trash first. Yeah, I'll take it. Screw it. Maximize our assets. Simple as that. Because like you don't realize it, but he, he might play in Dallas. I don't know. I can't. Uh, he's the 12th man. So he probably won't, but could be a value if, you know, you feel like it. I'm living and learning, though, because, you know, I, I like I should have just checked first and saw if they could have used them. But it is what it is. We'll be all right. It's like going to be a 29th pick or something. After that, though, we're good for this season. I'm going to just simulate through Wiggins. Oh, hell no. I should just disable these things at this point. And honestly, I don't see any world where I would trade Poe Giemski. Actually, I don't want to add him to untouchables just in case if I ever uh, if I ever go to make a trade and like, you know, like when you're doing trade finders and it'll add in a player like a beyond your own volition. I don't want to just ever be in that situation. Also, I just saw Ben Simmons on the market. Damn, you know what's crazy? It's hitting me right now as I think about it. Ben Simmons, I know I've had him a few times in videos. I love having Ben Simmons on the teams because you can make him a power forward and he becomes way better. And, you know, he just fits great. But this is literally the perfect Ben Simmons team. And it's kind of pissing me off that I didn't realize it because he would just be Draymond. He would just be Draymond. Because I definitely had a few chances to get him and I just didn't. But you know what? We're, we're second in the West, 29 and 13. And that leads us to third in the league, which is actually the Charlotte Hornets with an insane leap. Brandon Miller at the four, Cody Martin, LaMelo, Brandon Miller, Corey Kispert, DeAndre Hunter, Gary Payton. Hey, once again, defensive led team. Not fully, but overall they've got some good defenders out here and they're just randomly this good also detroit has taken their lead they got ron holland and santi Aldam. i rock with santi Aldam. i don't know why i just do i've just seen him play sometime from time to time played a lot for the grizzlies this year because you know or at least when he was playing you know got a lot of minutes because they didn't they didn't have nothing i wasn't i'm not sure if he got injured for any point in time this year either because i feel like everybody on the grizzlies did man i've got offered Jalen duran like eight times and he would be a fantastic center for this team also i think it's trade deadline day right yeah there's real quick just to double take no no extensions necessary all right let's just keep the ball rolling yeah there's nothing more to do either we win or we lose simple as that also any chance is steph has steph said anything about retirement oh boy uh okay here's the thing i've overridden other players retirements at points throughout this right i'm going to if he does go through this i'm going to override steph's retirement right if we don't win this season especially i'm going to override steph's retirement i overrode lebron's retirement so i'm not gonna let steph retire if that's the case but just know no. especially with how things are lining up where like our rebuild is actually kind of getting to a head now to where well we haven't obviously fully rebuilt because you know i've acquired a lot of first round picks which i could actually check real quick if any of those are gonna be good uh warriors from the kings 13th i don't i think that was the one that i, I said was top three but i wouldn't really care regardless i think the nets warriors one or this was i don't even remember what but either way okay cool two damn near lottery picks that's cool and then the pelicans one isn't good that's fine what i was gonna say is with the rebuild which i was just kind of mentioning that like it technically hasn't been much of a rebuild because we've still been competing but with it kind of coming to a head we're at the point where this season would be a perfect season to get a big star if possible but i'm not sure how possible that'll be men thompson all nba first team which he tends to do a lot it seems like in these uh, also steph had to have steph didn't make all nba jesus christ oh wow we actually dropped to the fourth seed we were the second seed for a while but the clippers and pelicans jumped over us in the uh standing so that's kind of concerning but also it's all right i guess isaac got a bit more efficient it seems like everyone played pretty well isaac was the only one in the oh actually oh well norman powell didn't play for us so who cares but um kcp also in the negatives but once again defensive specialist type of guys i'm not worried about it all right first round minnesota they win game one we win game two we win game three let me just make sure too lineup wise yeah this is good and actually with how with how consistent this dude was yeah hugo gonzalez we're gonna ramp up your minutes even more you're gonna be the clear-cut scoring six men it looks like curry we're, you're going for 41 minutes a game screw it all right game five we win another one and come on all right we're going to the second round and memphis sw they swept okc so obviously we're not in no easy series also dallas is not even here they lost in the play-in they were the seventh seed and lost twice in the play okay second round 
And once again, I, I could actually switch matchups. They do have Jaron Jackson at the four, though. So I don't know if I'd want Kuminga on him. I don't know. But I could take Curry off of Ja and put Isaac on him if need be. But you know what? Let's just start with game one. Okay, they win. Game two, we win. Game three, they win. You know what? Let, let's try that. Actually, let me see how Ja played last game. Yeah, 49 points. Yeah. Let's get a dude on him that's going to be at the paint every given moment of the game or be ready to guard the paint. Why am I looking at Minnesota? All right. Ja Morant and Isaac get him. Kuminga on Jaron Jackson. Hopefully Kuminga can rebound a little bit. And then Stefan Castle is actually real solid, but we're going to have to deal with Curry on him. All right. And we win that one. Ja still dropped 41 on insane efficiency, but Curry did as well. We win another one and game seven. All right, cool. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. I can't say much more than that. Obviously. Yep. Yeah, we're going to lose. And obviously the one place that you can really say that we're not as you know whatever as a lot of these teams is just talent they just have more talent more scoring more talent more variability like that's a, even a thing that's obviously even an issue right now with them and the once again we lose the champion the grizzlies win the championship the eight seeded grizzlies at that they were in the play-in as the ninth seed that's crazy and our injuries aren't on so there's no explanation also shows that regular season means nothing also like i said yep curry coming back also um hey if curry's coming back harden's coming back yep we're, we're keeping it fair um screw it draymond you could stay around <laughs> clay might as well you too screw it and i already i think i already yeah i already did westbrook's last year so westbrook's gonna get out of here draft lottery we should have them two lottery picks back to back 13 and 12 and no luck no luck but they stay 12 and 13 that's not bad that's very good actually this will probably be curry's last year 2026 draft pretty solid should be high end anthony i don't know why it's spelled like that but he's in there bryson tiller's in here and obviously there's no no steph trade at this point it's just we we ball but i will say Remember what, remember what I told you, though? I was signing them contracts to where they're going to be really cheap. You know, they're front loaded. That also means that once Steph's 50 million is off the books. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of a lot of stuff we could do with that, especially when our team has been pretty proven. I know that he carries a huge load of that, but it's like the core has been very solid. I know we lost again. If we could put together a real good year this year, I could definitely see us taking the momentum post Steph and just keeping it going. I don't even remember signing TJ McConnell to a multi-year deal. I have no recollection of that. I thought it was a one year. Yeah, well, damn, we got four first round picks and i believe yeah our whole rotation is signed multi-year oh actually yeah yeah they are because we can just accept kcp's minimum which i believe i'll probably do and nobody big time expired this year which is good that means that all the money we have out there is all the money we have i can move on from mcconnell to uh, kcp like i said if need be but we are in the draft and the draft you know could be a big time to uh have a bunch of contracts so that's the only issue now here's the thing especially with our rotation now, i know i do say about like you know talent and everything but gonzalez he's gonna be in the rotation for a lot of years to come same with Jaden. same with peyton watson unless you know we traded him for something lateral movement whatever the hell couldn't i just trade up for a, a higher pick because i don't see why i would want to spend all that money on multiple top picks rather than just taking a higher pick Pick. If we could make a move into the, uh, they got Darren Peterson, Cameron Boozer, and AJ DeBonsta. I feel like AJ and Cameron are going to end up going one and two. Let me see what I could do. Because if I could move into the top, like four, better yet, top three. Okay, Spurs, they're not giving up their pick. But actually, though, Spurs were the eight seed this year. I don't know if they made it or they got bounced in the plan. Actually, they probably made it. And Dallas got bounced, as we saw. I don't think the Spurs would be opposed to getting better right now if, if I uh, offered them something. Damn, they stole Scotty Barnes. I thought about signing him too, but I thought he was going to go back to Toronto. That's crazy. That's even more of a reason. They're probably just looking to get good now. So if I could offer them something to stay good now. All right, so with the Spurs thing, I could maybe finesse something for their pick. Okay, so that's huge. Okay, so I wanted, ideally, I did not want this Darren Peterson dude. I wanted to bond star Cameron Boozer, and they just drafted Darren Peterson number one. So that means that one of those two guys is going to be available at three. So that was actually something i was waiting for so i'm gonna call them again after that all right so the trade that i was offering was pick 12 pick 13 pick 23 and then i think it was tj mcconnell for this and it didn't work obviously but what if i like finesse it a little bit threw in Peyton. obviously though you know i'm not stupid this isn't realistic or nothing but if i like really loaded them up with uh with what's it called role players good players whatever in general i'm not i'm not willing to break up the big four so to speak pojemski kuminga these are all cool guys granted they're not like some highly well I, I can't even trade him right now but i just think that they're good assets and i don't want to trade them also good price like i've said a while now i think that's going to come in handy sooner than later but 
What if I threw in Peyton Watson and then could I keep this 13th pick or actually do 13 instead of a, uh, I will give them our screw it 2030 pick. This kind of hurts, but, and I'll give 2029. There it is. Okay, AJ DeBonsta, and you know what? This is perfect. Cameron Boozer is gonna be our pick. Third overall, I had to give up a, a haul of picks for it. Honestly, realistic as real life normally would go. San Antonio, thank you. And uh, Cameron Boozer, stretch playmaker. You know who that sounds like? First of all, Hall of Fame, Giannis. But a uh, playmaker sounds a lot like Draymond Green. But also, we need, we've need we needed, you know, a, another big man, power forward, space the floor, score, be a superstar. So that, that'll that take that money up. And then actually, we did, what was it, two picks we kept on? Yeah, that's real, that's real nice. I will say, though, I would rather not sign second round picks this year. I'll take these two from Chicago. Why not? All right, and then 12th pick. We can get his brother, Caden Boozer. I think that's probably too good to pass up on. And not only that, perfect backup PG because, oh yeah, Key and Anthony's out here too. But Caden Boos is the highest, highest rated, highest ranked, highest everything. That is literally picture perfect. And then with our next pick, oh snap, they got a Kanye out here. Honestly, I'm going to get rid of this pick as well. For some reason, the Bucks are offering us two first, which is kind of crazy because you never see that on no damn 100 difficulty for a 27th pick. But screw it, I'll take it. Boozer, 80 overall off rip. And then his brother is a 75. Probably going to just be our backup PG off rip especially for chemistry purposes yeah i'll decline kcp's option for now screw it we could just sign him back if we want him all right now for free agency we're actually only six million off of affording kevin durant but i don't know if that's our uh not to use this again but our best plan of action but you know what maybe it is though maybe warriors reunion he's he's trying to do a thunder reunion that's kind of funny maybe it actually is I'm not even joking because we could just have him and Steph cook for one last one or two last years. And that's it. That would be it. But damn the money, though. And we don't have nobody to give up. Like not one person. I guess it would have to be Isaac. If I could do that, I would give him the no trade clause. You know what I'm saying? Butter him up pause i think i think it's gotta be that because there's nothing else on here that's gonna make a difference to try and make us have a championship run and then on top of that it doesn't even mortgage our future because we don't have anybody huge we're gonna have to re-sign anytime soon all of our rookies still have years to go so if steph and kd want to come here for one last world tour imagine a duel what's it called a duel um whatever the hell ceremony uh, uh what's it called again world uh not world tour damn it i just said that a farewell tour that's what i was trying to think of honestly yeah isaac i just for this dream i gotta hey you know what let's uh i rock with you john hey you're actually gonna fit really well over here in the utah uh hope uh, that's multi-layered if you want to read into it but we're 770k off uh the two year looks like it's the most appealing to kd i give him a play i could give him a player option and then like i'm a coupled hey hey you want to hold on hey don't hate me i'm not about to trade a whole damn player steph's gonna take a a two million dollar play pay cut <laughs> oh damn it didn't even give me any money back that's crazy that's crazy i just stole steph's money for no reason screw it i'm gonna try my best two year player option no trade clause come on kd come on kd let's go let's go cook the thunder so that is gonna be our signing and yes our signing not multiple not even possible in this but yeah if you look around like there's nothing else even appealing so like you know might as well let's just lock up uh can i oh damn we gotta renounce the rights to kcp that's tough and usman garuba and no not normal powell all right kevin hopefully there's someone else interesting out here in years to come because yeah hey the rotation looks real solid and i just realized too damn uh Actually, this is perfect because now Kuminga can play the two. KD can go to the three. Kaden, Cameron Boozer will play the four. Trace Jackson at the five. Man, I wish KD and Steph were younger because this is, man, this is crazy. Oh, it's almost like they won two championships already. But but Kuminga's going to the two and then Pojemski's just going to lead the bench. And then we got Hugo. And then this is basically, we could just run a nine-man right, nine rotation right here. But we still have some money left. We have the mid-level exception. And honestly, I know he's at the top of the list here. Wow, Peyton Watson got released. That's I'm not gonna sign him back. That, that's just that's just cheap. I'll let someone else you know have him. I was gonna say Rui, but actually now we have a lot of scores. It's funny though. I low-key do want to sign Peyton Watson because he it's the exact role. Either that or Tari Eason. You know what? Maybe I'll just sign Tari. Actually, yeah, let me get Tari Eason. Four-year deal, front-loaded contract. You know me. I'm finessing the contracts. Uh, don't don't not accept now. Hold on, hold on. Accept that contract. Yeah, okay, cool. We're still number one. Accept that contract. And then what else do we need as assurance? Uh, maybe I just saw Marcus Smart. Maybe him as another point guard, just in case Caden is trash. Who knows? Damn, it kind of is crazy. This can be a one-year thing. Yeah, Marcus Smart on the minimum. Screw it. I just saw Gary Payton out here. Where he at? Actually, oh, hold on. Okay, two things. Uh, yeah, young dude named KJ Evans. Is this um? No, I'm tweaking. 
Um, young dude named KJ Evans. Let's get him on a three-year deal. Why? Because he said he has a really high potential power forward. That's cool. Maybe he'll be something. If not, I could always just trade him and uh, it won't hurt nobody. And Clay Thompson, one year minimum. You know what actually? Oh, did Draymond retire? Draymond definitely retired, right? Yeah, Draymond's out of here. Unless he's on it, unless he's on a team. But oh, uh, you know what? Har oh damn, I was about to give Harrison Barnes a contract. Yeah, go ahead and build the culture back up. Grab Gary Payton on a one year minimum. Grab Harrison Barnes on a one year minimum. And that'll that'll call it a day. That's the whole team. AD somehow went oh, because I made him a small forward, right? Forgot about that. Um Hugo went up by three. Jaden went up by three. That's good to see. That's real good to see. And the dude I just signed, KJ, I didn't even know he was already in his second year but he he developed got some badges this dude i might have just got a little steal out of free agency clay thompson old as hell harrison barnes old as hell neither one of them will see the, the floor not a day not a chance in hell now we're really good and this is perfect right here all right bet 39 minutes to steph and kd they're gonna be playing a lot and they last last dance kuminga with 34 Kaden cameron boozer with 33 trace jackson with 27 ogmski with 25 and hugo tari eason Jaden and Caden boos it around at the rotation. I don't have Marcus Smart playing minutes right now, but if we ever need him, you have him. I know obviously he can lock up, but uh, he's always super offensively inconsistent as well in this game. I've never actually checked his either. Yeah, his is a 41, good God. And I feel like I never really checked that in general. I'm just like, damn, why is this player trash? Steph is already talking about it's his last season, whereas KD's talking about I'm probably gonna test my value in free agency. Um, So one of them might retire and one of them might not. Either way, you know what this season is. And we finessed the third pick, so that gave us, you know what I'm saying? I feel like this has been nice. I feel like this has been nice. Kind of like keeping the culture while, like we still have two players, well, three technically, but like, like, you know, not including Steph, two players in the starting lineup that were originally key rotation core players, and then the six man also, while also improving the team. Let's go seven seconds off. Actually, no, go balance. Go balance. Like balance. Seven seconds would be fun with this team, but oh my God. Uh, ah, they're offering me Steph Curry for Tyrese Maxey, and I'm going to decline. They said, no, we want the last dance year. Damn. What's crazy is we're actually not even, eh, we're like two games back. And actually, I take it back. Go seven seconds. Why? We're high tempo. And we have a ton of players who hits tough shots. So screw it. Also, I know they just offered me for Steph, but they literally couldn't offer me for KD. Oh, there goes Jamal. Oh, you know what's crazy? I don't have the I don't have the screenshot on here because I didn't play the game. But one of my friends just played against Jamal Murray on rec like three hours ago. And they got smoked by Jamal Murray too. Yeah, KD really just rocks with playing basketball, whereas Steph is still talking about, yeah, no, I'm, I'm done. All right, so Steph's still on the retirement and KD. You know, let me just let me just report back with this. Um, we're not the best and we might not be the best, but this is our best shot. We are top 10 in offensive rating, top two in defensive rating. That's very good. Now I'm trying to think what would make us better offensively. And I have one idea in mind, one very, very obvious idea, but we're also just, you know, two games back of two seed. The thing I was going to maybe talk about was benching Trace Jackson Davis and starting OGMski and moving down everybody from the two, but nah, I'm not going to do it. Oh my God. Hugo is shooting less than 30% from three this year what the hell is wrong with you you were just shooting 40 percent last year what's going on i'm gonna have to cut him down a lot right now and i'm actually just gonna give a lot of his minutes to po Gimsky. yeah he's the lowest and estimated wins added on the team oh, actually tar easton's at exactly zero but aside from him Giannis wins mvp i feel like you never see that this far in the simulations cam Booz wins rookie of the, rookie of the year io wins six man of the year joel dpoi jaleel bethea most improved damn yeah he washed um I don't know if he starts over there. No, he doesn't even start all season. Yeah, he, he man. Yeah, Jaden Quaintance was the wrong pick. This dude was the right pick. I mean, mm, and I could have just kept Zach Eady. <laughs> I mean, Jaden's cool. He's good. Either way, we're still at a point now where somehow we're the sixth seed. But we have Curry and KD. This is the last dance. Hypothetically, I could have traded Curry for uh, Tyrese Maxey, but we ball. We're here and we've got promise and hope and heart and grit. And yeah, all right. Rockets. They've got Aiden, Cooper Flag, Trey Johnson, Cam Whitmore, Amen Thompson. Where the hell happened to Jalen Green and Upperin Shengun? They're both gone. All right. Well, interesting. Um, they win game one. We win game two. We win game three. They win game four. They win game five. Are we about to lose this inexperienced Rockets team game or whatever the hell series one? Got Steph Curry and KD. All right, we won that one. It said Steph shined. Yeah, he's he, he shown game seven. There's not much else we could really do. 
I'm be honest. Uh, all the stars play a ton of minutes, and we just got absolutely smoked in the last minute or two or so, and lost. Men Thompson triple double, and you know what? That's the pack of the of the Warriors era. It is officially over. Um, not the video, but the Warriors era is officially over as Steph Curry is going to retire. Clay Thompson is going to retire. I honestly forgot these two were on the bench. Um, Steph, I don't I don't know if he made all NBA or anything, but uh, he made the all star team. You got that much from him, but he did take a pretty steep regression, honestly. And then he was still fantastic, but from 50 plus field goal and 44 plus three to 43 and 50, 49, you know, whatever. And uh, the era is over. Dame and Steph make the Hall of Fame. Clay did not. We finesse any picks up here this year. We get the Warriors via the Lakers. Went up from 15 or 14 to four. Oh my God. That's huge. Okay. So maybe, maybe you know what? I've put in a ton of hours and effort into, uh, and also, by the way, KD might accept this. I don't know. If not, not, we'll be fine either way. OGM Ski is a restricted free agent, so you know he shouldn't command too much money. But the fourth pick in the draft was just God gifted to us. We got the 24th pick as well, which I'll probably just keep both. We're not in some sort of money crunch right now, unless we get to free agency and we are, which would be fine. Also, we gotta have a conversation. What the hell was that, Hugo? 29% from three, 30% just about. 51 for 173 after you made 74, 176. Damn, he shot three less threes and made over 20 less. I don't know what the hell that was. A sophomore slump. Up. And yeah, Jaden. I mean, Jaden. Jaden's pretty cool, I guess. He's only like two overalls lower than that other dude, uh, Jaleel Bethea. But once again, yeah, it's not uh, not ideal. How did Caden Boozer play also? I never really checked his stuff at all. Oh, yeah, there you go. I mean, hey, honestly, we're just going to enjoy that we got the fourth overall pick and keep it pushing. Cameron Holmes. OK, Who, who's available? Elijah Arenas. OK, OK. Now we're talking Sydney Moncrief Hall of Fame potential. Caleb Holtz available. You know, he's got Hall of Fame, but you guys with Hall of Fame. But number one ranked in a few mock draft things. We're going to go with Elijah Arenas, Gilbert's son, with this pick, which uh, I know we just lost our, you know, Hall of Fame point guard. So it does suck that we won't be drafting a point guard. But does he have it on his tag? No, not really. It says great vision, solid playmaker, though. So maybe I can make him into a 6'7 point guard, Gilbert Arenas. So maybe that's just the vision because I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, Marcus Johnson, he's got Hall of Fame potential too, but I'm not going to pass up on the best guy in the draft for no reason. Oh, so yeah, let's go with him. And you know what? Maybe there's a point guard out there in free agency that'll love us. Shoot, maybe we, we have a crazy conversation and just trade Kuminga for a point guard. No, I'm playing. Also, thankfully, uh, Boozer's a really good facilitator too. I, I, I like this team still. I like the team a lot. Haja is I believe that's Trevor's son. I'm not sure. 24th pick, Quincy Wade. Brandon Bass. You know what? Yo, yo, okay, the. They could have this pick. I'm going to trade it for... I only want to finesse and get multiple future first. But if I have to... Uh, I'll trade to OKC first. Screw it. Whatever. I'll include it for two. Back. That's fine. Elijah is a 78 overall. He, he might just be starting PG year one. No joke. Kevin Durant declined his, his player option. No surprise there. But also was open to seeing if maybe he wouldn't do that. I don't know. Uh, maybe I can offer the craziest bag ever to Men Thompson. But probably not. I mean, Scoot Henderson. Wait, wait, wait. So Scoot hasn't been offered a contract yet at all. Hey, man. Maybe I just steal him. Damn, Asar got traded. OKC. We lost to the Rockets, right? Yeah, we lost to the Rockets. So I don't, I don't know if that would be yeah, i don't know what pick even was that that we got the fourth pick off of the lakers oh is that from that was from years ago when we traded um wiggins maybe i don't remember i think i just took seconds for him i have no clue so obviously we could offer to just keep kd for another year i'm not sure how that fits our timeline but also the question is what is our timeline because now we're like not rebuild bad but also not good good i think what i'm probably gonna do is i probably am gonna offer a contract at scoot henderson just to see actually i'm gonna offer three real fun dumb and stupid contracts day one all right so kevin durant contract 97 overall still i'm gonna offer kd a one plus one with a team option remember when i said the the term dumb contracts yeah victor Wembanyama hold that contract offer um we're number two. I'll, I'll accept that as some sort of validation. And screw it. Throw Scoot. What's crazy is I think we could afford Scoot and Kevin Durant damn near. And I saw all these other players getting stolen by other teams. So why couldn't we be one of them? I'd be overpaying them a pretty decent amount. So KD and Scoot both accepted. I don't know if they would. This is the thing. I don't want to make a trade to like free up Cap. And then I actually can't sign the guy anyways. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. You know what's crazy? The Blazers drafted Nikola Topic after Scoot Henderson. And they were still. They also have Alex 
Alexander Saar. Damn. They had the fourth pick in that draft and the 13th pick, and they got those two. But yet, they're still a bottom two team in the West. So I guess it wouldn't be that crazy that they would let him walk. I don't really know. But it's not like they're missing out on much, it seems. You know what? I don't know if Scoot is the right. Mm. I will say, though, Cameron Boozer is supposed to be like a fake Jokic in this, like, you know, facilitator type guy. Him working with like Scoot, who can cut to the basket and things of that nature, and, you know, real explosives, throwing lobs to him, things of that nature. That'd be interesting. It is genuinely the only need we need to fill right now. Now, here's the thing. I was thinking I accept this Scoot deal to see if they're going to budge on on matching it and let KD walk for like two seconds. Then I might offer Kevin as well. Screw it. I'm going to try it. And they let us get Scoot. They let us get Scoot. Okay. That's pretty big time. Now, KD is going to is is leaning towards signing with the Mavericks. Okay. So hypothetically, I would have to free up like $10 million if I wanted to keep KD for the one plus one or about 14. Is that possible? Because if not, I might just stick with Scoot and call it a day. Um, I think the only contract that like I'd, I'd be fine with moving is Tari Eason. Let me just continue to toy with the rest of the league. I'm going to offer KD the one plus one just so nobody else can sign him. I know he's going to accept it. Oh, now they're trolling me and trying to act like I can't accept Scoot. What the hell's going on here? Okay, 2K. I might get stuck with Kevin Durant now because they're not letting me accept Scoot at all. Not even letting me click on him. Well, maybe, maybe they give me a warning sign. I don't know. Who's free agents next year? I think that's the one big thing that's holding me back. Oh my God. Unless he re-signs Jokic, Tatum, Ja Morant, Anthony Davis, Zion. All these guys could re-sign, but damn, next year is going to be crazy. Uh, you know what? Uh, on, on the odds that not all of them resign, I'm, I'm going to take my chances. And that means that. And also, I mean, it seems like they're forcing me to take my chances. But all right, I guess we lost Scoot. Yep, he's back in the market. All right, Kevin, welcome back for another one plus one. And that means that Elijah Arenas is more than likely going to be our starting PG for one year. I grabbed Ben Simmons on a little one plus one, finally fulfilling the prophecy. Oh, I think this is actually Paige's real son. Let me, let me try and grab him real quick. Peja Stoyakovich's real son. Because he has... I know his name is an Andre. I'm pretty sure. It's something else. But I'll take him on a four-year. Screw it. Come on. Accept that. Accept that. Yeah. Got the new Stoyakovich. He had a high potential. That's I was just I was just filtering by high potential. From Stanford, 78. Oh, he, he, he got drafted last year. Okay. All right. And that's, the, that's our last contract spot. So uh, AD goes down by one. Kuminga up one. Boozer up four. Ben Simmons. I changed him to a power forward. Jaden Quaintance up to an 80. Hugh go up to an 80. Got Marcus Smart back on, on another minimum. The Boozer brother up to a 78. KJ Evans up to a 78. And the Stoyakovich guy up to a 74. Elijah went down one because I made him a point guard, but he's going to be the starting point guard one way or the other. It sucks. We couldn't. I feel like, you know, because this is the thing. We're in a very good, we're in a very good future spot at this point now. I'm gearing up for this year. Elijah getting a lot of minutes rookie year. Uminga getting 34. KD getting 37. By the way, is he saying anything about retirement? Oh, no, nothing. Cam Boozer, 40. Then 28 for Trace and Pojemski. And then honestly, the, the uh, God knows how many spot minutes to uh, Hugo, Aiden Boozer, Ben Simmons, Tari Eason, Jaden. They're all just kind of all playing a lot because like Hugo was my guy, but then he sucked last year. Tari Eason's pretty decent, but he's also not super efficient. And then like Ben Simmons plays the same role as him. I was going to just not play Ben Simmons, but then in my mind, I was like, wait, but Ben Simmons could be playing over Boozer because he's like a point guard. Yeah, but I'm not going to not play Boozer because he was also so good last year and then Jaden so who the hell knows what's going on but whatever we got a lot of guys screwed even though it's first weeks can I see any contract extensions oh Jokic it's a bonus damn even quickly Donovan Jason Tatum Julius Randall OG Ananobi Jimmy Butler John Morant Anthony Davis, Devin, golly, the whole league resigned Zion. Okay, well, um, let me let me take another gander at that. Uh, I, I see why the free agencies are always dead, one or less, and now it's down to nothing again. That's good. Some of these are probably even team options. Uh, technically, this is worse than last year. I would have been better. I I didn't say I didn't want to keep Scoot. It just made me. Honestly, though, Garland wouldn't be a bad player. Garland would be a pretty good player, actually, if we could steal him from Utah. If he doesn't resign, for the love of God. Or DeJounte even. DeJounte, ah. Mm. Or time has to, you know, heal all. And Elijah Arenas just has to save the, the franchise. So far, we're playing about as well as we usually would with Steph. Honestly, we're 8-5, and five, which is on par. But that's also with Kevin Durant still alive and well in in the league. Elijah Arenas, though, 16 points on 50%, 45 from three to start his career. Had a 29-point game and a win over Denver in their last one, which is his new career high. And honestly, I didn't give him a no-trade clause this time. Um, <laughs> AKD. 
You want you want to see what the trade market talking about? Uh, mm, there's some great trades, of course, like a Lamelo Ball, obviously. Dear De'Aaron Fox would be interesting. You know what? You don't know actually. I want to look. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I was gonna say Jesus. They would give us. Oh, that's what Kuminga added. Um, I was gonna say because if if the Kings are like trash or if they're still trash, the deadline or something like that, I would probably take De'Aaron Fox. It's just funny because I feel like us and the Kings have done so many trades with them being the reason oh, okay the kings made the playoffs last year and the other team was the hornets and they were really good last year and i think the year previous they were even better that's crazy this dude isaiah i believe he was on our team i didn't play him though he was our uh, two-way player our two-way contract we're currently tied for first i just saw we're 15 and 8 and now we are first this is post step it's actually pretty funny i just went to the bathroom came back and we're still not at the trade deadline on that note shoot i'm about to go to bed all right it's the next day uh, i forgot i was looking at the spurs i was seeing how they were doing post uh trade that we made okay they drafted ellis harrington with that 13th pick that year oh yeah and they had the second and third pick the year before man i don't feel bad for them anyways though this is because i was looking because they're tied in wins with us Boozer's averaging 20, Kuminga's averaging 21, KD's averaging 22. Now, granted, he's not, he's actually far from leading the team in the assists. He's actually third, but Elijah Arenas is, hey, he's doing a formidable job right now at the PG. And also, I did say, you know, I did say something about trading KD, but I can't trade KD, dog. We are the number one seed, unless I want to create some Brooklyn Nets insane conflict randomly conjured up in my head. Um, Yeah, no. And I know, if anything, uh, yeah, th he's retiring. So we're about to take a huge hit from that. But we ball. Everybody is under um, Luka wins MVP. Monty Williams, coach of the year for the Spurs. That's funny. He got out of Detroit and got better. Or maybe it's just Victor. Cam Boozer makes all NBA third team the new foundation of the team and we fell to the third seed but only by two games the lakers are our matchup this year back what i was about to say assuming anthony davis is still there jerace walker d'angelo russell rotation should be good although we lost game one i will say though we it, oh did it mess him up no it's still good let, let me let me look a little bit because if there's anybody that under uh, that's underperforming in like those role player that role player tier i get him out of here i think Jaden quainton shoots too many threes he has a 42 percent from the field and yeah 23 percent from three how many does he shoot 77 a season yeah that's a pretty that's a pretty big amount he's only got a 69 three-point rating but I, i'll let you fire a couple uh, it might only be on like 10 i don't even know maybe okay yeah it's on 48 let, let's bring that down to like sorry you can't even see it but what's half of 48 20, 24 shout out to kobe yeah we'll go with 24 for you buddy cut those in half and you'll be a bit more efficient you can still check them up when you want to i know i said originally that like i wanted him to be a shooter further on in his career and honestly everyone's a pretty positive addition it looks like so can't cut anybody out the rotation right now we go up 2 one 3-1 and 4-1 okc second round this is obviously a big time series um we don't actually have like a defensive specialist in the starting five i don't know if elijah's good for his age uh, as a rookie but i don't exactly have anybody to just put on shea so i might just let the rookie handle it honestly we win game one lose game two win game three lose game four lose game five shea's not putting up insane games it's really just the whole team is good and then actually i just did a video on shea and it tends it seems like he does that a lot when you uh, have a really good team around him he's not dropping 40 every game all right we win that one uh you know a cool eight point win kd had 40 kd by the way i was looking at the wins added he's still our most valuable player so obviously once again this is really interesting because like we've been partially you know handicapped by our, our aging stars and it's like how are we gonna transition from them you know um if darius garland is still a free agent and actually before before we talk about that okay well we're, we're about to lose. yeah we're about to lose it's over we uh hey I, honestly once again it's like first of all elijah shot five for 19 in this game and po Jemski shot five for 15. i was actually thinking about it um when i woke up today i was like you know i kept that core together but i could easily see them moving po Jemski and some Jordan Poole stuff. Granted, he doesn't have some insane contract like Jordan Poole, but I could easily see them moving him like down the line if they ever needed to. Um, like in like the Steph era, if they needed to actually improve before he retires. Oh, wow. The Grizzlies made it again. And they lost to the Cavs, who actually... So I know I'm talking about... Uh, what's it called? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Darius. But he's not even on this team anymore. It said he was on Utah. I don't know how he got there, but he's on Utah. Can I see if he got traded? He did. What did they trade him for? Lori Markinen. Wow, that's crazy because that's who they traded for Donovan. And it's also crazy because it's honestly a really good fit. I mean, sure, like you got a bunch of tall, clunky wings. Uh, Yeah, that, that's fair. And he's not like a defensive specialist by any means. So I'm on like a Coro. I, I feel like if they had like a really like a Lonzo ball at point guard or a, I think of another example. You know what's crazy? I was literally about to say Deuce McBride and he's right here. I, I didn't even look that far down on the thing. If they have like a really good defensive PG that can like 
you know what I'm saying, hold down the perimeter. And then obviously they have good defensive bigs. I could see this working really well. Well, obviously it just did. And Kevin Durant, do I overturn his retirement for the hell of it? Do, you, do we really think he would retire after that deep of a playoff run? I don't know. Maybe. Also, yeah, everybody else here, I basically, well, at least the important players already overrode all their retirement. You know what? And obviously this video is tending to take some years at this point, which I kind of intended it that way. I, or unless we were to win in the Steph era really early, I didn't think. Even then, I was excited to see like the future of this team because obviously we're trying to build a new dynasty. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to, it's the Warriors, the most storied franchise of the whole 2010s, of my whole damn NBA watching life. So I wanted to build them back up somewhere. With that being said, I feel like one more year under KD's tutelage, letting Boozer develop a little bit more. First of all, we could win a ring. It's possible. Because like I said, th there's not going to be a Kevin Durant level free agent. You know what, KD? I I've used my uh, negotiative powers to bring you back bastard for 40 year old season also we have the first and the sixth and the 13th and the 14th i think that 14 from dallas was the one um that was best of either it was it was like the, the worst pick of either them or the thunder or something and i guess they ended up bad i don't know but either way we have one six 13 and we are gonna get okay were they all protected they were all protected. Damn. Except for the 13th and 14th. So we just lost the top picks. That's okay. Um, and honestly, it's funny because now we're in the point opposite of the Steph era where when those picks do convey next year, if those teams suck, we could I could actually see myself trading those players for a star. So doing the opposite because obviously the stars haven't been hitting free agency. So yeah. And these picks, well, to be fair too, I do keep on trading down my picks because I don't want them, which like a first for a first is always free. And those picks might end up better than like the 27th they were projected at. You know what I'm saying? That's probably where I'm getting lucky right now, like like delaying picks. With that being said, I, I don't think I want these picks this year either. I'll probably try and, um. I mean, Caden Boozer is cool. He obviously technically could have started for us this year elijah arenas but i don't even know what exactly i mean it's really just any best position available at this point because the team's like kind of core is built we're good at every position we just need to get great so it's basically just best player available and i'm not going to trade up this year i'm probably just going to keep maybe just one of these picks i don't know i just don't see where a player would have a spot in our rotation maybe the backup small forward i don't know because i think i like pojemski off the bench and kuminga at the two and obviously with that it's i think basically just wings right now is our I would say quote unquote weakness because the bigs are pretty well set. I feel like Trace, it's weird. I, I look at Trace and I'm like, you're at 82, whatever, but he's never given us any issues. There's nothing wrong with him. He's efficient. Height doesn't really matter in, in a, I, I would like a taller center, but height doesn't really matter in simulation. And it hasn't seemed to affect it when I jump in either. So basically just wings, which obviously Elijah Arenas could also win a ring. So basically any anything one to three is where we're looking at right now. Because I like Poe GMC off the bench. I feel like he's not a starter on a championship team in this era. He could be, but also too though, when we're trying to hit everything down to like the nine, because we don't, we're not gonna, you know, KD's not gonna be here forever, and we don't exactly have. I mean, Booz is gonna become a big time star, so it's also time at this point too. We just gotta let time, time heal all, and heal start the walking. I throw out three lottery picks in here just to see the best offer, and it's DeAndre Hunter. Yeah, no. Let me just see. You know what? Pojemski. Uh, actually, throw T Tari Eason on there. I rock with Tari Eason, but he's not playing a lot of minutes. So if he's making eight million, not playing a lot of minutes, throw actually throw trace and tar east and i want to see if we can get a center upgrade because that's technically the only oh my god just read shepherd and the eighth pick isn't bad but nah all right so that's literally the only offer i get for that how about tari i mean hugo he might have to go soon too with how he was playing okay cool no he got a shooting percentage back up this year he had a crazy fluke year he had a under 30 percent year back up to 43 i don't know what the hell happened and it's funny actually i always talk about center upgrades but but cameron boozer can also just play center so there's always that as well let me just sim towards the draft isaac Hayes, number one projected. You know what? I'm going to just go to the draft. I don't plan on trading up, so I'm going to just go to my picks and see who's available. 75 overalls. Jesus, the uh, top rated dude, they're they're rated with, they're saying they're Udonis Haslam. Yeah, get get these picks out of here. Just because also too, I don't want to pay these damn players. You know what? Actually, I'm going to give this pick back to the Mavericks for their 2030 pick. There you go. Actually, it was it was around their selection. It wasn't their exact. This one is. Give them a pick up. You know what? Mil Milwaukee will give up two first for the 14th pick, so I'll do this. And these could obviously come back handy in a future trade timberwolves top five i think i actually looked at the timberwolves they were up in this draft and i'm gonna take the top five protected because that means they're worse and the 27th for future two future seconds we actually have a second round pick still and i don't want none of you scrubs either i'm not gonna lie I i'm gonna trade this pick too this draft is really bad and it's weird because it's actually it's still a user made draft we went from like eight picks to no picks it's talking about accepting all of our team options that's interesting oh you know what yeah because ben simmons overall went up so they don't and they want me to accept kevin's wow can i see 
see who's uh, on under no contract right now. Hold on. Contract year is free agent. Okay, Kevin Durant. Darius Garland's still there. Hooper Flag's probably not available, really. So they're basically just saying, don't, don't even bother letting KD into free agency. Just accept the last year which is interesting because that might be logical. You know what? Yeah, th there's really nobody else to sign. Some of the best players in here are our players. So you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just $56 million team option. Yep, I accepted that. And it's just Garland out here who, you know, we would have had money for if we, I mean, you could argue it would have been smart to just go and get him, but I, I'd rather take another shot at a big ring year than just mitigate that for, for another, a, a caliber of this player could be available next year. And I don't believe we're gonna have to pay anybody, anybody huge like Boozer, Boozer's still under contract for another year. So yeah, we, we should be fine if we wanted to make another signing next year. You know what though, actually we do, since we have that overabundance of role players, can I see like, could I make a trade right now for another stop? Damn, but I, I don't want to waste money before. Can I see again? Uh, contract years, one or less. Who's available next year? All of these guys. Is there any chance any of these bastards actually make it to free agency? Because it would be fantastic. Let's see. Almost none of them have any type of option. All of them could be free agents. Will any of them make it? I don't know because that would be huge. Anthony Edwards, Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, like any of these guys would obviously be huge if, with KD retiring. What I was going to say is because we were literally running an 11 man rotation last year, wouldn't it be smart to like package Ben Simmons, Tari Eason, maybe Poe Giemski, shoot, maybe even Kuminga, probably not, um, for a star, you know what I'm saying? But what if that star takes up too much money? Oh my. Mm. First of all, trading this to the Spurs wouldn't be logical because they're a huge rival. Also, Scotty Barnes actually isn't even that good stat wise, but something like this for like a 90, 88 to 90 overall player, the right player would be huge for us. Just alongside KD for one year, you know what I'm saying? But I also might just let it rock. I was low key gone for a minute. With that being said, I just saw a tweet that said that Caitlin Clark's play our courtside tickets to her first game cost two thousand five hundred dollars. Courtside tickets to a Pacers game in the playoffs cost a thousand. I would literally, I would do un unmistakable things for courtside tickets at the Knicks games to be a thousand dollars. Um, shoot, I even considered going to Indiana just in the past ten seconds of my head, but not really though. I didn't, I didn't get that far. We got thirteen players on the roster, which means we have one spot open. I'm not even gonna force nothing. Just just give me a, a young player with high potential. Let's see if I can steal some out here. Who's the funk? Oh, he, he's 86. Daryl Kelly, B plus potential. Oh, damn. He had an offer. Oh, I lost. He has an offer from the, from the Spurs trying to steal my players. Man, no. Let me get this dude in a one plus one. Actually, yeah, screw it. I'm, I'm going to steal him from the Spurs. Oh, see you, Marcus Smart. I actually kind of hate signing two-way contract players now because they always give them the qualifying offers and then they force them to stay around longer than I want them to. It pisses me off. You know what? Screw it. Sign none of them. We hate those guys. KD went down by one overall. Boozer up to an, oh, this is Boozer brother up to an 82. And actually the main booze are only up to an 85. You know what though? Progression's weird in these new 2Ks because it's not often, a lot of times it's not always linear. So like he might just have like a four plus boost in like two more years because 85 is kind of bad. I mean, it's good. Elijah Renus went up to an 80. Damn, I low key. I actually might have a weird lineup that I might run this season, which would force Trey Shacks and Davis to get benched. I think I might run a lineup, which not that I want to bench him. Just hear me out. All right. So this is the lineup we're going to run. Caden Boozer at the one with his brother in the starting lineup at center. Kevin Durant the, at the four, Elijah Arenas at the three, because Kuminga stood the same overall at the two anyways. So and Elijah went up by three going to small forward. So I put him at small forward. Poe Giemski leading the bench. And actually, I have to figure this out real quick. Either Poe Giemski or, or uh, yeah, I'll let either him or Ben. Oh, don't, don't mess up too much now. Either him or Ben Simmons has to play the one. And you know what? I'm going to let him play the one because he doesn't go down that much. And for the first time in a while, that's going to let Jaden not be in the lineup at all. And is, uh, yeah, this is this is last year on his contract. So him and uh, this dude, KJ Evans. And I was actually just looking at Evans. He's really good. 99 three-point shot. I damn near want to play him. You know what, actually? Give him Tari Eason's minutes for the first portion of the season because I, I got to see how this dude can play. I can't just let him, you know, just wither away. So I'm going to give him Tari Eason's minutes for a second. Let's just see how that works. Okay, we are one and six. We've, we've kind of bounced back. I, I kept things the same. We're eight and 13 now, but I, I say kind of because it's very just kind of. That's not great. Um. Okay, you know what I've learned from this? Let's go back to the old starting lineup. K, KJ Evans just played okay, whereas Hugo is playing lights out 54% from three. So he's obviously, you know, he he's solidified because we're bringing the center back into the starting lineup, Trace Jackson. Honestly, I don't know who to bench. So we're going back to an 11-man rotation. I want Tar Eason to play for defensive purposes. So we're going back to 
to an 11 man rotation again for now but i think the trade deadline this year is gonna bring more stuff again or actually for the first time maybe ever in a minute i don't know okay fantastic wow uh i don't remember wait was this when the lineup change was i don't remember when it was it was the eighth against houston it looks like yeah okay ever since then we have lost two games. That man, Trace Jackson, salute. Oh, my God. We, we That man needs to be starting and playing minutes at all times. Good God. Can I see as a starter real quick? Yeah, he's only lost two games as a starter. Damn, we should have drafted this dude, Jaleel. Oh, my God. He is going insane. And he would have been the Steph replacement, too. Uh, I was looking at the short-sighted, man. I was trying to... I, I literally made another James Wiseman pick. And everything's bad right now. We just lost three games. We're still just in the play and because of how trash our start was. And you know what? I know it's January, but let's 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 take a look real quick. I'm not even gonna base it upon fully upon stats because a lot of guys on our team are playing good stat wise, but I just fit wise something's got to be wrong here. And you know what? It's pretty clearly the point guard we need. And <laughs> I could have just well, I, if I would have signed Garland, we probably been worse. Let's be honest. But real quick, actually, th this this makes a big difference as well. Contract years remaining. Who the hell is about to be a free agent? MB did not resign. Sengun did not resign. Jalen Green did not re. Okay, okay, that's 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 good to hear those are some good you know big time players that could so i don't want to be wasting too much money on a trade right that's what i'm hearing what i will say is i don't think even as a backup pojemski is a point guard i just had to do this for fit purposes i don't think he's a point guard elijah arenas needs to be playing the two with kuminga at the three i feel like that's just but actually no i think i think elijah might need to hit the bench for now because i just ah he's averaging six assists but this might just be another lost season honestly or do i just start caden over him but he he averaged more assistant caden as a starter so that doesn't make sense okay i just made a trade we have traded brandon pojemski kj evans and a 2029 first round pick for nikola Topic from the blazers if you remember if you remember first and foremost the blazers are not very good we gave him slight draft capital they already actually paid Topic. he's making about 18 million per season and you know what honestly i, I feel like i kind of short-sighted them i know that dude kj evans is good but he doesn't have much what's it called like he, he hasn't played much yet go ahead and give them another mid first round pick i'll give them miami's first this year just for a second round pick i'm just such a nice guy so two first round picks for a guy nikola topic who's their backup point guard now he has hall of fame bailout gold dimer he's a great passer solid scorer solid rebounder this is the thing though he's the backup behind scoot henderson over there now he's going to be our starting point guard look at his per 36 21 points eight rebounds nine assists for basically the past three or two seasons so he's going to start for us over here no doubt that loses with a starting lineup of topic kuminga kd and boozer getting most of the minutes actually going to give a few more to elijah arenas off the bench as well we still want him to play a hefty amount which he'll be a shooting guard now with Caden boozer hugo Jaden quaintance and tari eason with ben simmons not playing minutes but i'm gonna keep ben simmons for now just because in, and also i gotta tell Jaden, hey i'm be honest that three-point shot is not coming around his his uh his field goal percentages and things of that nature are getting cooked because he keeps on shooting threes he's got to stop shooting threes eternally but if he still sucks even after that probably gonna trade him um actually might use this as a basis right here these last few games also is kd still retiring probably right probably still his last year yeah it's over i just want to see for fun that we can get a uh, michael porter jr jamal murray scotty barnes desmond bain tyrese maxi or jalen brown we'd have to trade topich though i genuinely wouldn't want to do this i had to sign a player you know what give me vasile michich oh wait hold on oh not edit not edit idiot. not edit give me michich why because i feel like michich is just the old version of nicola topic so you know now we have a new vet for you too buddy oh boy deadline we are 25 and 26 we actually started racking up damn was the topic trade wrong five for 16 did, did i make a mistake was he not a per 36 type of guy was he a sit on the bench and lose type of I don't know. um oh my he is shooting 41 percent as a starter this season wow okay his offensive consistency is 99 he just sucks how are you trash how is that possible actually can i see a shot chart uh just mediocre from three somehow on the left wing i mean that's also the whole season not just with us i don't understand do we have some sort of hex on us? and also to go to balance please i'm i'm done with seven seconds all that curry era stuff it's over but we're we're ninth right now we're a playing team right now Oh boy kuminga will resign uh okay hold on actually trace jackson davis you you can resign mm, yeah yeah you can resign because it, it won't affect anything in the near future anyways i think this off season is going to be huge for us because oh he declined it damn there we go uh tari eason you don't even really play i'm gonna give kuminga his contract just because he has two years left so it wouldn't affect anything this off season anyways and he's he's a valuable asset so it's not like teams like if i ever needed to get rid of his contract it's not like teams would not want him you know what i mean he's a 
good player. He's a 90 overall damn. On that note, though, since, since this dude, I mean, hey, Nikola Topic, you are now the backup point guard. I'm sorry. This dude has taken an absolute dive to, to God knows what since he got traded here. You are going to be the backup point guard getting 20 minutes a game. I'm I'm giving my trust back to my starters again for the last time. He's under a multi-year. I'm not going to rush to do anything right now. I think I did say about trading Jaden. Ben Simmons also expires. You and actually, let's let's get a... Man, Josh Hart is making zero dollars. Absolute opposite of a bag chaser. Pretty simple trade I'm making. Ben Simmons to the Mavericks for Dylan Mingo in the first round pick. This dude was actually the eighth pick a few years ago, but he's not that good. I'm probably just going to decline his team option. I just wanted to get some for Ben because Ben's not going to make the rotation again this season. And then honestly, I feel a lot of changes coming this offseason. I'm not going to lie. Kari Easton, he wants to resign. I'm not even going to resign him right now. It, it's just it's just ugly. It's ugly right now. Lucas, Lucas wins coach of the year. Luka Doncic, most valuable player. Cam Boozer made all NBA third team, obviously. As we are, I believe, yeah, we are the ninth team in the play-in. Let's just take one good look again. Obviously, Boozer. What's his shot tendency for the record? 96 yeah okay no 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 getting him any more shots him and kuminga both average more points than durant this season that's over and then elijah arenas Topic. he actually mm, well yeah i don't know buddy buddy's confusing it's just gonna be a, a complete overhaul probably this offseason with that being said let's not delay anything playing game number one. Oh my god it's against sacramento oh my god this is an insane complete coming of age story where we are about to lose to the kings in the play-in again the last minutes of kevin durant in the nba it is over the Warriors have been eliminated. Amen Thompson Western, Donovan Eastern, and Amen Thompson Cooper Flag in the Rockets. Jesus. Oh, man. That's a good team. That is a good team. I feel like Kuminga just lacks a certain amount of dog that some of these guys have. And I love, uh, you know, he's a good player, but efficient, solid. Maybe we just need a 1A dog. And somehow it wasn't even Kevin Durant. Kevin, it's been real. Not really, but we'll see you. Kind of disappointing. He officially, and I honestly, I was writing the storyline in my head. I was going to be saying, you know what? He could lead a team. He didn't need no Steph Curry, ironically, on the Warriors. But draft lottery, we got the six best odds as well as 10. And we are going to get eight and 10. That sucks. Also, we lost our own pick to the to the Spurs, which was also a lottery pick. That's funny. All right. Uh, who's in this draft? Cameron Mercer, number one overall. Michael Jordan, Hall of Fame potential. Who has the one pick? The Pistons. They had 30 wins in the East. I believe they still have Cade Cunningham. They have basically very similar core. They're not really the team that seems like they would. I'm not going to lie, though. We have a Hall of Picks. Eight. Actually, no, this is a bunch of seconds. Damn. Let me see the contract scenario uh, situation real quick. Finances, salary cap breakdown. We have a 20 million player option to both Elijah Arenas and Cameron Boozer and Caden Boozer right now. That's, oh man, the player, the, I mean, team option player. I don't remember if I said which one, but did those just put the, us in salary hell right now? This dude's not getting accepted. This dude, Mingo, he, he's going to top liver. We're not going to see him again. Um, Honestly, we're about to blow, blow up the team. It's over. At least a fair bit of it. We need to make sure. I'm not going to get over dramatic. We'll keep Michael Stauffer. I damn near want to, uh, I damn near want to fire him, but oh my God, Draymond's still in the league. I, I did not know. This man, Draymond, has been on the Kings and got traded to Utah this entire time he's been on the Kings. Holy hell. I'm going to stand pat where we're at in the draft. I'm not even going to force nothing. Eighth pick. That's crazy. They drafted one of the dudes I wanted. They drafted Eric Dampier Jr. He was ranked 18th, but he got drafted fifth. They knew. One of the only dudes left that has all NBA on it, on his tag, Joshua Higgins. Six foot one point guard. Really good shooter. Hold on. This reminds me of somebody. 21 years old. Terrible defender. Hey, you do remind me of somebody. I won't lie. And you know who I'm talking about. I'm going to draft him. Eighth, eighth overall as well. Damn. I think it was, what was it? Seventh or eighth they got him on. He's the best long range shooter in this draft. All right. Uh, Joshua Higgins, welcome to the team. And uh, I, I might trade the rest of our picks because it doesn't look like there's any good players. No joke. This draft is terrible. I swear an uh, auto-generated draft would be better than this. Where have the Thunder been? That is a good question. I feel like we haven't seen them do anything. We'll trade our two first round picks for two Lakers picks and then just get rid of all these seconds. We don't need these damn things. All right. We're stuck with the 20. 28th pick uh sim through the draft i don't give a damn we got josh higgins 75 overall point guard 93 three-point shot from texas tech 77 ball handle fast with the ball can't play defense it's intriguing 78 shot tendency and yeah we're gonna keep these three and get rid of mingo and kelly and how much money does that leave us with i have no clue Jaden and hugo both hit free agency i would let him leave if need be okay we have just enough money to offer 35 year old joel Embiid. just enough 
and we can definitely outbid. I could already feel that we could outbid the Sixers. Um, I don't see how I wouldn't do this. But also, though, there's a part of me that wants to sign Sengun. But looking at Embiid's career, now, for one, he actually had his first kind of down year this past year, which sucks. But I think we could bring him back up. It is the one thing that, now, shout out to Trace Jackson Davis, but it's the one position that we've ever so slightly lacked. And when I tried to put Cameron Boozer there, it didn't work out as well as I thought it would. There's part of me that wants to get Sengun for some sort of future talent, but mm, with him, Tyrese and Siakam over there in Indiana, they were just barely even a playing team themselves. Sixers, I was looking through their roster. They still have Tobias and Maxi. Nothing has changed and they've never won a ring. So I wouldn't be surprised if Embiid wanted to change of scenery. And I actually have one more signing I'm looking at that I want as well after I sign Embiid if possible. I'm going to give him a two plus one year deal with a team option. Actually, when does Boozer expires after this year, right? Yeah. So on that note too, this is going to be the last time we even have a chance to sign a huge free agent, at least with our current core without breaking it up yeah whichever way you cut it it's over for our cap space over this after this i'm gonna go with a two plus one deal the super duper max and he is not all right well plan b you know what? Maybe it was for the better. Alper and Sengun. And I say welcome because nobody has offered him. I'm going to front load his contract. And on that note, I'm going to offer another guy as one as well. This man, Jaden McDaniels, has insane shooting stats. Consistency is mid, but his shot tendency is so bad that he has never been a shooter his entire career. He's never shot the ball 40, but his shooting stats are insane. Also, his defensive stats are insane. 97 perimeter, 91 interior with all the greatest badges you could ever ask for. He's 28 years old. I'm going to offer McDaniels as well. A bit unproven, but I think this could be like a franchise changer if it works. 16 million is a good chunk of change. Though. I might have to trade somebody to make this work. But we, I feel like we have a few guys that I don't care about. Okay, it take us over the salary limit. I think it says we'd have 13 million left. So he'd basically be taking Tari Eason's role. I feel like Tari's been kind of meh for us. I'm going to trade Tari to Utah for two first round picks protected he's been solid but not solid enough and that will allow us to sign Jaden as well and then they're actually trying to uh yeah we got to renounce the rights to Jaden Quaintance and Hugo Gonzalez with this but I'm I'm fine with that I rock with him but I'm okay with it Joel Embiid still with Philly I respect it that's your team and actually though there there is some other guys out here now not Jaleel Bethea that'd be a little bit too much money maybe though you know what would I would I make nah he's not a he's not a true point guard though is there any way I could steal any of these other guys from their teams Dylan Harper doesn't have an offer oh he's actually from Philly I had no clue he, he plays in Philly it's literally like there's a point guard shortage you look at the best point guards in the league we're looking at Carlton Carrington that's the best point guard in free agency right now we already have two point guards three point Point guards better than that so the lineup i'm planning for is after we sign those two sengun's gonna obviously start at center i think i'm gonna put kuminga back at the two with a with a elijah arenas off the bench or or at the starting one yeah i actually i'm probably gonna start arenas at the one kuminga at the two jd mcdaniels at the three for defensive purposes and then boozer and, and uh and sengun that'll be interesting i'm not worried about hugo or Jaden. it's been real salute you, you're not you weren't what i thought you were and Jaden is expecting 32 million in free agency oh my god you were not that nice like i played him enough minutes many times before good god where's hugo at 25 million yeah no i i can't say i regret that i can't say i regret letting them go good god and because of the 100 trade difficulty they don't even get me much back on the what's it called either like they were never giving me much back for in return when i looked when i looked at them in trades and it might be the year to get stoyakovich in there stoyakovich he's up to an 80 when i make him a small forward this right here would be the full rotation it's basically just everybody that's on the team, minus Higgins. You're not ready yet. I'm going to sign Isaiah Almanzla with our last contract or whatever main rotation may be, just because we have some weaker body bigs like Sengun. So maybe he'd be, he, he he's pretty good at um rebounding and overall shooting. He's got a post, he's got a post bag actually, interior defense. So it's more of a traditional big that'd be playing power for, but he can also space the floor. I think, I think he'd work well off the bench for us. Like he'd fit in well next to Trace Jackson. Hopefully he accepts, it'd be, it'd be a, uh, it's sad and I, he's got a movable contract i ain't worried about signing him for a decent amount of money anybody for the culture we could bring in actually you know what this dude roosevelt thomas give him a two-way contract just because he's good and i don't want to give him too much money I, i'll throw out some two ways this year screw it it's kind of hoping draymond somehow made his way out here oh hell no i'm not bringing back wiggins i'm sorry i don't even have anything against him i just don't think of good times when i think of the warriors with wiggins even though they had some good time maybe maybe he's the missing piece maybe i have to give up my uh stupidity actually i saw josh hart too cool locker room guy i don't even know if we have money or I don't even know if we have roster spots. I can't even remember. Screw it. Give me Wiggins. Oh, damn. Josh Josh Hart went to the Sixers, too. Why we lose so many players to the Philly this year? All right. Sengun is here. Booze is up to an 89. I told you he would take another jump eventually. Caden Booze is an 85. Only one lower than Nikola Topic. Maybe I'll just let him. I don't know. Either 
one. Uh, Elijah Renus went up by three. He's still at shooting guard, which is his, one of his better positions. So 83 isn't insane for a 22 year old. What draft was he was 20, 2026. He was a year after Boozer. Okay. So Yakovic went up to an 82. So he might have to play. All right, cool. I, I, I like it. This might take another three years. All right, rotation this season is what I said it was going to be. Oh, well, actually, it's a little bit different. I decided to start Caden Boozer. And then we got Kuminga, Jaden, Boozer, Sengun, Elijah playing 32 off the bench, Topic playing 23, and then Trace, Al Almansa, and Stojakovic. It's kind of crazy how many NBA kids we have. But yeah, Jaden, you know, we need... Uh, I felt like the defenders we had, I mean, yes, Tari was good, but I'm trying to think back on the teams right now. Because if I think back on the teams, we had Trace at the center always. I probably could have found a way to start some. But also, I'm not going to lie, like, Tari Eason, his ratings were good, but his badges weren't good. Like, this man, Jaden McDaniels, has to be an insane... You know, they got KD, we got Jaden... We actually had both. So far, mid 17 and 14, not incredible, not terrible. Oh, snap. I didn't change, though. I didn't make him shoot more. I actually did want to make him shoot more. Although we do have a lot of players shooting a lot of shots. I will say that. Sen Goon leading the team is scoring. I do think him and Boozer is an interesting fit. I think him and Boozer is an interesting fit. Not like it's slightly redundant. That's also why I wanted a defensive player like McDaniels, because neither one of the I actually don't know how good Boozer is at defense. I have no clue. Uh, he's got 85 interior. He's got anchor on bronze and he's still young. So he's probably going to be pretty decent. Sen Goon obviously not known for his defense at all. But it was also a sense of like, let's just get someone of value because I could always trade him. Arenas averaging 15 and a half points as the six man currently. Um, you could argue since our two leading assists uh, uh, guys are our two bigs that Elijah should just start. I mean, he's playing 27 minutes, he's playing basically the same as Boozer. We are sixth in offensive rating and damn, we are bottom 10 almost in defensive rating bottom 11 damn oh it's because it's because of it's because of Sengun is it might be and i view i'm actually gonna swap boozer and uh topic i just did the wrong players i'm gonna swap boozer and topic because topic is actually playing really well this year i know once again yes maybe it's a fluke he's off the bench whatever but 44 percent from 353 from the field i feel like uh, under the best circumstances still his like little bit of untapped potential with us would be really good and it's just been disappointing thus far and you know what you could argue maybe Continuity would be good, but I'm actually going to try it with this lineup specifically, especially since our defense is already supposed to be good. Or wait, no, our offense was good. Yeah, no, leaving Jaden McDaniels. I'm only putting in topics because him and Boozer are kind of the same player and it's just like, whatever. Maximize as, mu as much as possible. Yeah, bro, we are just mid. I don't know. We just lost a bunch. Of we just lost three straight games by two or less. You know what, man? Kuminga at 1.2 estimated wins added as the best player or the best perimeter score on the team and you know me i'm not the type to go crazy over estimated wins but what just says that we wouldn't be better having elijah arenas take your spot and trade you for something else dog this man kuminga i don't know if he deserves blame i never really looked too deeply into games or whatever throughout this whole run you know i've just been taking it year by year but man real quick can i see team intels i'm about to look through and see what stars are available anywhere at any point at any time i have scrolled through almost every single team and you know what actually i just saw one more that could be interesting um there is two players to my mind take that back three players to my mind that would be interesting for us to trade for and you know what screw it since i just also said it while i was looking at two of them uh anthony edwards would be one phoenix suns devin booker would be another one and lastly cade cunningham three underperforming teams timberwolves 20 and 24 suns 19 and 25 and the pistons have made absolutely zero just zero motion whatsoever this entire time and they just had the number one overall pick cameron mercer now would Cade just be point guard uh jonathan kuminga for us i don't know but i also don't know if kuminga could have ever averaged 29 points wow i just clicked on i just clicked on devin booker and it actually gives me trade offers off the rip one of them being kuminga and nikola topic this honestly wouldn't be half bad and we would still be in a totally fine spot like as a roster wise i would suck to trade this dude who was supposed to be the next curry but um we would get this guy who's pretty decent uh whatever he's not really that good so it's low-key tough so for one i went and looked at edwards and i looked at k they didn't give me trade offers for either one just without anything include or on the trade finder they didn't they didn't want to trade either one and honestly i don't want edwards because um, he has an auto generated face that doesn't it, it doesn't look like him so i don't want him anymore and then the second one uh, i don't want Cade because i feel like like i said Cade might just be point guard jonathan kuminga so that leaves us to booker now for one they would even just take sengun in the first round pick so here's my thought though if we want to be an actual contention team wouldn't our best case scenario be to have 290 overall 93 plus overall players and i know not everything's about overall players but i also feel like with sengun and cameron boozer both being elite talented playmakers and actually 
actually Booker's averaging nine assists this season, which he's done before, and averages eight plus, eight to nine for basically the past five, six seasons. Elite playmaking. We can run some elite sets, elite plays, a ton of shot making. We got Jaden McDaniels out there for defense. This would mean that uh, whether I put Booker at the two, I'd probably just put Booker at the PG if he's a PG right now. I don't give a damn. Either that or I could start uh, Caden Boozer. Also, too, Booker's, I don't want to say only 33, but 33 means we got about five, six years to play with. And by the way, this is this is the trade that I would be looking at right here. The one that I already showed would be getting this dude, Juan Nunez. Sadly, I'd throw in our eighth pick from last year, Joshua Higgins. And this would turn us into like a real on paper and in general, I feel like as a team, fundamentally powerhouse of a team. And also why I say that we even have, would have years to work with, with Booker is because let's say I'm like, okay, you know what? He's not a great defender. 83, solid, but not fantastic. Although I will say it is nice to have a tall PG to guard guys uh, like Luca, if switchable, whatever, if ever needed. Basically what I'm getting at is that this year, if this team isn't perfectly fit for him, if we need better defenders at the two and the three, like Whit McDaniels, we can make that happen. But for now, I feel like, now this is the thing, uh, money-wise, it literally wouldn't work any other way unless I was to do this trade right here. I could swap the, the rookie PG for Almanza, but honestly, he'll probably be a pretty decent rotational player if once we trade, you know, this many rotational pieces, we're probably going to need him at least, you know, whatever. I don't want to just throw him away. Suns already have DeJounte where they could put a point guard. Then they have Trey Johnson, who's their new 23-year-old former six pick. They actually have Jaden. They signed our guy Jaden as well. And damn, he's playing well over there. Not good for him. But also not like insanely well, especially with the role he's in. Like 12 points per game isn't nothing crazy. This is basically Trace Jackson da uh, Davis, whatever the hell's name is. Trace Jackson. Yeah, it is Jackson Davis. Uh, his peak. So you know what? Devin Booker, Kuminga, salute. I tried, man. I wanted to keep you around. You and Poe GMC, the only player left now. Ironically, Wiggins is back. And then you got Jackson Davis, who probably isn't going to leave. And our like slightly new core that we've built along this time. But uh, it's been real. I'll be seeing you. And I'm just I'm just tired of the mediocrity. So we've got Devin Booker. I don't know why they're trying to start Stoyakovich. It was kind of crazy how quickly we went with like an overabundance of players but to just this. But yeah, we're going to have Devin Booker, Boozer, and I'm going to go with Sangoon all them at 36 minutes. Arenas, I'm going to go with 32. McDaniels, about 28. And then Boozer, Stoyakovic, Jackson Davis, and Almansa are going to run the bench. I don't want to play Nunez. He's not bad, but he's not necessarily needed off of our bench. I'm, I'm excited for this little era. And also, since we're already locked in with the, the, the Sangoon contract, I already knew like this was the time to, to get another big contract and say, screw it, we're locked in. This video has taken way longer than I thought it would, but I'm enjoying it. You know, we, we taking it realistic. This man, Bronny James, got traded to the Pistons. All right, 22 and 20. Hopefully, we turn this thing around we got a few days until the trade deadline first game was a 30 point loss second game was a 30 point win yeah i have no clue what to expect i need to sign a player and while i want to troll and get kenny lofton you know there could be a situation where we no joke need a decent player actually who's this dude jace richardson 23 years old 28th pick in the draft how much money you want Thir three million i'll take you i was gonna take lonnie walker but that works so far d book isn't shooting as much as i would want him to oh my god his shot tendency was only 95 why is it not 99 i don't know hey look at that jd mcdaniels forget your offensive consistency being kind of low super efficient 51 percent, 47 from three this season i feel like this could be the year we make a decent run i don't know why i just have i just have hope but at the same time i've had hope uh, a lot of the Steph years felt murky. I don't know. Screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this team for this season. See what happens. Both Boozer brothers expire this year as well, so it's obviously a great year to uh decide to what's it called to you know tr commit to contracts because those guys are gonna cost a lot of money. Hey, I said I trust in the team, and so far we took a huge leap since the Booker trade. Hold on, actually, look at this. I think this is it right here. We traded for him right here. Yep, and he actually had four points on two for nine shooting in his first game. We lost to Brooklyn, lost to the Bulls lost to the Wizards, lost to the Magic. But since then, we went on an 11-game win streak, lost to the Grizzlies, won two more so far. So we are 13-1 and one in the past few weeks post-trade. Hey, man, come on. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it took this long to, you know, have to make the hard decisions. Like I said a few years ago, I just never thought that, you know, he would have been the issue. And, and look, I know we're racking up a few losses right now, my God, but definitely looking like it. the future is brighter without Kuminga. I, I didn't think he was going to be the issue, but, you know, it might just be the concept of like a win wing who isn't doesn't shoot enough volume of three pointers isn't like an elite enough scorer nor an elite enough defender to rationalize having him you know i he had to be like a no joke like a third option and this whole time you know uh, if i guess to be you know what though i could rationalize keeping him with him though because we had kd and curry next to him for half of the time so you know you could say he wasn't the most elite three-point threat around them but you also can't say that like you know he had to carry an offense but now that we're in this era and he's got to kind of carry us yeah it wasn't working dog and you know 
know what? It seemed like it worked pretty well post-trade. Hugo Gonzalez went to the Jazz and averaged 19. You know what? I did know this dude was nice. I'm just be honest, though. We weren't going to play an 84 overall no more than what we're currently playing them. 59 wins won Coach of the Year. And we actually had 50, so we weren't too far off, especially after a terror. We had a terrible start. What were we like? Was that last year? I can't remember. I think we did. Or at least mediocre. We were like the ninth or 10th seed when I made the Booker trade, or maybe seventh. I don't know. Cam Boozer makes all NBA second team with 21, 11, and seven. Obviously, he was a, he's a huge part of that. But once again, He's not like a get the ball every time and score type of dude. If anything, him and Sengun are real similar. I already know they it'd be real interesting because I feel like no NBA team has had two Jokic's or two Sengun's or two, you know what I'm saying? Like two really, really good playmaking big men. It's usually just one. But imagine like, for example, Jokic passes it to Aaron Gordon over with a behind the head pass. And then Aaron Gordon throws it between his legs to God knows who. Like that's the type of stuff this team could be up to. And of course, first round, we somehow with fourth seed matchup against the Thunder, who are 50 wins, one win less than us. Um, that must mean, though, that we're on a better run than them. And you know what? I was talking a few. Uh, the, Sun, the Thunder did end up winning one ring, but I feel like their roster isn't as good as they normally are. Like they didn't draft any third insane star so far. Yeah, they didn't draft any another insane star. So that's kind of interesting because I feel like they usually always do. Instead, they've just got really good role players, which still makes them really good. First game we lose by two. I'm actually going to simcast these give less minutes to Jaden, not a chance in hell hey no joke i went to the matchup screen and put Jaden mcdaniels on shea in the fourth and we are outscoring them in the fourth and actually you know what it's two minutes to go tied game so screw it let's see we haven't seen this team play in a long time a very i don't know if we ever saw kd and steph minute together sadly but they didn't really give us nothing to watch so they sold bad it was also like 6 a.m when i was recording that so yeah who the hell is that little dude Garden? Uh, you know what? Actually, Cameron Boozer is the power forward, so there is that. And you know what? Look at that. Big body board. Back out Sengun for three. That is good. I like... Hey, what did I say? That playmaking. Playmaking, versatility, etc. And Jaden is not in the game, but Caden Boozer is not a bad defender, so he's on Shea right now. We'll see, though. This is where you... you this is your proven grounds. Can, can he get over the screen? A little bit. Step back Shea. Back out. Chet for three. I just remembered... That's the same. Shea has the same animations and everything that I had with him in uh, the video I just made on him. So I have a bit of impartialness to him. All right, Booker. Oh, yeah, Booker on Shea. Booker all the way. P what the hell? Close shot pull up, I guess. That works. Come on, D-Book. The thing is, too, D-Book, one of the best scorers of the generation. But it's just need to put the right pieces around him. And here we are. Shea to the basket. He's going to get fouled. No no shot, but he may, he, he's going to go to the line. We need this game pretty bad. We can't let up both games on our home court. I don't know if it took off the stuff I put on SimCast, but yeah, I want Shea guarded by Jaden McDaniels. Not a question in hell. And like I said earlier, I like that, though, because then Devin Booker is basically the size of a small forward, so he can guard a small forward real easily. I don't know if he's going to be on uh, Jalen, but yeah, whatever. Either way. No, Cam Booz is on Jalen. All right, Elijah coming off the screen. And the screen by Sengun for Booker. Booker goes right. Oh, beautiful step back by Devin Booker to take the lead. 55.3 to go. That's what we've been needing. I, I'm sorry. I already know Kuminga couldn't do that. I mean, come on now. It's just natural born skill. With all due respect. Oh, the steal by McDaniels. Everything's coming together. McDaniels is going to go to the basket. Pass it back out to Boozer. Boozer over to a wide open Devin. Hey, he's got a new jump shot. And that actually looks really realistic because he got a lot of lift on that shot. It looks more like his real shot. And that is going to make it a five-point lead. 36 to go. This is a this is some of the best basketball we've seen this team play this whole video. Shea, fall away. Yeah, that's tough. The pass into Elijah. And they're going to foul, right? Oh, my God. He drops the ball. And Dyson's going to pass it down to Chet. Chet dunks all over Elijah. And now we have to take a game-winning shot. We just sold bad. We just sold so bad. Elijah Arenas, you're in like year three or four. I don't understand. Did you know, I just realize he didn't get better this year, did he? This man was our highest pick yet. Or actually, no, Boozer was. Either him or Boozer was our highest pick. I think Elijah was the fourth pick. Either way. All right, passing to Booker, guarded by Shea. Do not pass this ball. Just keep this ball to yourself. Take a tough shot. Do whatever. We're going to need you to take this shot. This is why you're here. You know, we needed our, our go-to wing perimeter scoring option. And that's what you are. Changing the course of the franchise. I'm bigging him up. Up crazy right now you got to really listen to all the things i'm saying booker pull up midi and he makes it devin booker two seconds or once 1 1.3 to go down or they're down by two not us obviously huge shot all right I, i'm feeling the confidence now obviously when we started this video steph was already 37 we got a lot of time now with devin booker and come on just stay on shea just stay on shea keep your hands up please god no thank you all right one one 
I like this. This feels like a team now. It's real nice. It's real nice. Okay. It's taking a long time, but we're here. Actually, on that note, I'm about to say, yeah, I actually want to give more minutes to, uh, real quick. I want to give more minutes to Booker, more minutes to Boozer, more minutes to Sengun. I'm actually going to round out McDaniels to give him 30 as well. And then we're going to go over to the Thunder, go over to OKC and make sure that Shea is guarded by my guy, Jaden. Play him tight on and off the ball. The rest we we live with everything although i think i mentioned even earlier that shay's a very willing passer in these sims it seems like but come on this is it this is the run i can feel it mid-season trade of of legends they'll be telling this one in the history book okay we're kind of blowing the fourth quarter lead but you know what we just took it back we're gonna win this one by 10 elijah renis okay i actually didn't give him a minutes boost when i was looking because i'm like eh. also Caden boozer had 20 and 10 off the bench yeah this is this is the team right here and then we randomly a hey, I saw Andre Stojakovic sitting in the in the free agency a few years ago, brought him in. He's been a real solid rotation piece. Trace Jackson Davis still playing them backup center minutes. Almanza, he's a good defender. Not much else. Come on, just lock it in so my hype can go go for good use. Come on, lock in. This is only the first round too, but it's the Thunder. This is going to be one of the tougher teams we play. We win another game. Booker with 26. Just give me one more. 3-2. Okay, fine. I'm not going to mess around and not, not simcast game six. They are cooking us so far. They are oven roasting, pot basting, uh, all whatever adjectives verbs you could use um okay Caden Boozer actually damn Caden Boozer is cooking them I have to mess around and give him a few more minutes my god he is he is absolutely going nuts but you know what though that means that he's he's working well against their bench lineup so I'm not going to change anything all right come on just one game no 3-1 lead blown please my god there we go just hold on to it I have a feeling they're not going to hold on to it but you know what as long as we are in a close game I gotta stay confident all right 135 134 game seven uh you know, it's crazy because I've already been recording for hours, but this is like a second rebuild within the rebuild, you know? I gave my best shot with the Curry and slight KD era, but this is the real connectivity with this team, you know? All right, pass over to Shea. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Shea will get the screen on the right from Chet. Shea goes to the basket, back out. We leave Chet wide open. That is never the right move. I don't know why we're doing that every time, but I'm not going to change anything. We ball. Booker goes left to the basket, into the post. Oh my God, swims around Markel Fultz, gets the layup. Devin Booker, come on. Come on. You already know Steph is mentoring him. You already know Steph is on uh, the sidelines or whatever, you know, at home texting him. This is your OG. That's your OG. Shea, a post hook. That is good. Oh my God. That is literally the shot you would want him to take. Tweaking out. Crackhead, crackhead tendencies, and he still made it. Also, I see that a uh, booster is still in. And Devin's going to step back. That is good. Devin Booker is unconscious right now in this series. 111 tied game. Shea is screened by Chet Holmgren. Shea goes right around the screen. Great defense by what's his name? By McDaniels, but not by Sengun. Sengun gets cooked. You know, it's funny. I've never really considered it. Would Cameron Boozer be the way better matchup? Six foot 11, better interior defender. Actually has the anchor badge. Oh, they're actually the same height. I didn't even realize that. I thought Sengun was uh, like 6'9. I didn't know he was 6'11. At least the height difference i don't gotta i don't gotta regret but you know what's crazy sangoon's perimeter defense is also a 73 oh they both have 73 i don't know they're both mediocre matchups for chet holmgren but it's also chet holmgren all right 54 seconds to go screen on the right by cameron and booker will go right to the basket another beautiful step back and he misses it the biggest shot of the series so far and oh my shay runs straight into a charge who just drew that charge? Cameron Boozer drawing the charge. Let's go. Yes, sir. All right. Subs are in as well. So uh, Elijah Arenas is back in. Come on. One more shot. One more opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. Devin Booker, the spin at Shea. Tough layup, and that is good. And that's a good shot because that leaves 29 seconds. They don't get the last shot. Great shot by Booker getting to the getting to the cup. I like this. I feel like I don't get a lot of, a lot of videos to uh, show Devin Booker love. I don't know. I don't know who the hell Clintman is, but he's in the game. Pass to the Shea. Shea running around, going nowhere. Screen on the right. He's going to run right into pretty crowded territory and wide open Clintman for three. I don't know what we're doing with those, with anything. The defense is just terrible. This is why I can't watch these games. Now I'm like, damn, I wish I was playing. I low key just could, but <laughs> not at this point. I'm committed. We're going to keep on coaching, although I'm not really coaching because I'm not, you know, said it. Oh my God, Boozer, what are you doing? Oh my, Boozer, he shot that. He shot my, my facilitating power forward. He made it, by the way. But this man, Booker, could not have been more open. Oh my God. Are He's supposed to be Jokic. You know what, though? We'll send him to the line, I guess. Who are we going to send? Who are we going to... Oh, my God. They threw it all the way up court to Jalen Williams. You know what? I'll, I'll take it, I guess. I don't know. He should be like a 93 overall, so it's not really the best option. Oh, he missed it. He missed the first one. There's no timeouts, but he misses the first free throw, and Jalen will hit the second. 
Okay, two-point game. Are they going to force a three or what? Booker runs it up. Booker to the to the mid-range. Booker steps back, fade away. Devin Booker for the mid-range. Three seconds, please, please. I, I swear, please. Oh, my God, he's going to hit it. He's going to hit it. Oh, thank God. We're going to OT. We're going to OT. Wow, Devin Booker. All we needed was that one damn step back, though, and we would have won. Shout out to Cameron Boozer for hitting that garbage shot, too, even though he could have passed it to the corner. And shout out to our team for not knowing how, knowing how to play no damn defense, either. All right, Simcast. So far, it's 150, 149. Okay, Cameron's at the line. He's got an MVP chance. We are in Golden State. We did have home court. He's got Devin Booker's free throw. That's kind of ironic. Coincidental, whatever you want to call it. He misses the second rebound by the Thunder, but he hit one, at least. Not exactly ideal, but it is what it is. We just got saved off a of miss of free throw, so, you know, I'll take it. All right. Jalen passed down. They got Booker on Shea right now. And step through. Pump fake to the post. Tough layup. Okay. Good defense, Devin. There you go. That's where height is very, very uh, pivotal. Jaden, Jalen or whatever. Jaden McDaniel is going to pull the mid-range. That's bad. <laughs> a deep mid-range with that much time on the clock. Whatever. As long as you get a stop, though, he's not going to get a stop, is he? He's not going to get a stop, is he? Okay. Come on. Stay with him. Stay with him. Oh, my God. The spin and the layup. Oh, he got to stop. He got to stop. Pass up to Arenas. Arenas, he's in the mid-range area now. Oh, Sangun has a crazy mismatch. Pass down to Booker. Booker in the post just shot some absolute garbage. What the hell is going on? Okay, both teams not getting buckets. You know what? Shea's about to get one right now. I knew it. I knew it. Hey, I played enough, uh, what's it called with him? Uh, the My career video. Player lock. You got that whistle badge. All right, two-point deficit. Two garbage shots back-to-back. -back one stop in between. We need a bucket now. Booker going right. He's dribbling right by Elijah. That's not really ideal. He'll go left. He'll pull up immediately on the mid-range, and that one is good. That's Devin Booker to the T. Yep. All right, 54 seconds. Need another stop if you can, Jaden. Stay with him if you can as well. He steps back out. He takes some garbage, and the garbage is good garbage. It's like when they was in Ratatouille, and they were finding out like that they really loved food based off eating the garbage. Anyways, Devin goes left to the basket, back out to Jaden. Jaden will get a screen from Alperin Sengun. Pass down to Sengun, nearly threw it away. He will go to the post. He's going to hand it back to Booker. That's a good shot. And that is off. And that is going to be the season. All the stock in the world in this year. And we sold. For real. Devin Booker, 40 points on 16 for 24. Elijah Arena, 6 for 22. Do we need to have a conversation? I know you had some good games, but damn. Golden State eliminated. If I don't see him improve, we're going to have a conversation. Because I'm not about to have a, a 83 overall in this lineup for too long, if not necessary. He's the only one of the only players to shoot under 50% on the team. Along with Almanza, who's not an offensive player. And then you're, you're, a, you're a bench player, uh, Andre. So I don't really care. Damn, that was bad. And did it just say Devin shot 26% from 3? What the hell? Yep, and no, I was about to say, no way we lose to the champions again. Yeah, no. Cavaliers are going to win it over the Spurs, actually. We would have had a lot more to go through to get to the finals, but we almost beat the team that got the conference, even though they lost to the Spurs anyways. I'm going to I'm gonna stay the course, man. You got to stay the course at this point. See you, Josh Hart. Tom Thibodeau retired. He saw Josh Hart go. He said, he, I, have, I have nobody else to play 48. Utah and the Lakers picks are ours, and they are 10 and 13. We are going to oh, lose the Utah one back to the Jazz, and we get the Lakers one. We also have the 16th, 17th, and 28th picks. To keep on deferring them because we don't really need them maybe this year we kind of need one because we we're running a nine man rotation but i'm also not gonna you know uh it's just yeah this might be the the warriors might just be cursed honestly trading pick 28 and 17 to the rockets for two top three protected picks two second round picks for two second round picks and honestly for the 16th and the 13th picks i'm gonna just keep them see what happens Let, let's see uh i'm gonna take dallas stewart he's got all-star potential three badges as well off rip so he must be okay and i actually saw one other player i wanted as well it was jordan mcdaniel 21 year old with drew holiday ceiling oh whoa david whitaker Dirk Nowitzki. hold on i can't just see that and pass up on it give me david we'll see if that potential becomes anything if not it'll just be funny uh juan yeah you can you can you can kick rocks buddy we don't need you and we're just gonna go ahead and re-sign the two boozer brothers and keep it pushing I think we actually do have oh no we don't have money okay like damn is my player trash they offering all these all these offers to aj debonsta but cameron boozer got none you guys our qualifying offer all right i got both of them back yeah i was looking for defensive players in free agency lou dort <laughs>
I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign another dude as well. This dude named Scotty Middleton. He had really good defensive stats as well, but he's never got a chance anywhere. Um, let me get him on a two-year minimum. Hopefully he accepts. Yep, there you go. I'm going to sign a high-potential paint-protecting center named Lowell Lo Lo Roy. That might actually be it for our contracts. I, I think we might be out. All right. Team is pretty young. Boozer went up to a 91. Actually, good to see his defense is one of his main things that went up as his three-point shooting. And he's got rise up on Hall of Fame. Sadly, his anchor stood on bronze. Same with his rebound chaser. But I'll also, Elijah Renus, there you go, 84, 87 overall big jump. Caden Boozer, 87. Dojakovic, 85. He was just such a random, random pickup, and, it, and it's worked really well. Got Hall of Fame Claymore, Hall of Fame corner specialist, gold catch and shoot. Yeah, he needs to continue to be a really big time player in the rotation. Then just a couple guys out here for the vibe. All right, this year we're starting with Booker at 35 minutes. Elijah Arenas, Jaden McDaniels, Boozer, and Sengun. Same starting five, same two guys coming off the bench with main minutes. Dojakovic and Boozer. And then Trace Jackson Davis, Lou Dort joining the rotation and Almanza. Hopefully this works well. If not, the Warriors might have to fire me. And honestly, my last thing that I could imagine having to change before I become a, a GM by fireable offense, I'm gonna be honest, hard, hard pill to swallow. Probably trading Sengun. And you know what? Might not have to because we're top three in offensive rating and top four in defensive rating so far this season. Second in the conference. And the reason why I would say trade Sengun is because of defensive purposes. But if we're going to be better defensively, don't give a damn. Oh, we 39 and 11. Second best, clearly in the conference, just barely behind the Maverick. Finally, hey, even if we lose, you can't say I ain't try. All right. So Yakovic is averaging 15 points off the bench. Boozer's averaging 14 points off the bench. The other Boozer's leading the team and everything. Almost. Booker's only averaging 19 points. He's averaging less points than Arenas, but that's fine. He's averaging a lot of assists. He's averaging a lot of fouls. Sometimes he needs some fouls. He's the best three-point shooter on the team. That's also very important because you know what? Screw him. Even to go, go to him right now. Kuminga, 36% from three. Booker, 46% from three. How's he playing over there, by the way? Oh, 19 points. Yeah, enjoy enjoy him. Um, yeah. Actually, you know what? How's the uh the dude playing? Not top itch. He's playing terrible. Higgins, damn, he's still not playing. 78 overall. I'm telling you, he's gonna be the next Steph. Just watch out. It's like that uh that Shea trade. That Shea for real. McDaniels and Almanza. Oh, this is three-pointer. I was about to say they're super inefficient from the field. Um, Ludort, very efficient. 49 from the field, 44 from three. On less than one attempt, but we'll we'll let him slide. Defensive rating, we we fell further into like the top 10. But offensive rating, we're the best offensive team in the league. And you know what? Part of me wants to say, let's just lean in on that. And I know we need defensive help. But part of me says, uh, actually, nah, I, I can't get over my look at look at his badges. I can't get over my my basketball knowledge. What's it called to to, to not start Jaden? So I was going to say that man Stojakovic might just he might just deserve the starting five spot at this point. But you know what? I will. I will give him a I will give these two a few more minutes. So or something like this. Yeah, because they are heaters off the bench. Any contracts? Like, uh, maybe Booker. No, he has a no trade clause. He had a no trade clause when I traded for him. Oh, my God. That shows you how realistic. Shoot. He wanted to get a he wanted to get out of Phoenix real bad. So Yakovic expires this year. And actually, uh, I hope I have. He's not restricted. OK, it says we have three bird years, which means we can go over the salary cap. Hopefully that's true. And they tell about Jaden McDaniels on the block no he's not Cameron boos are on the block are we insane all right at the very least we're at a point now where this season is going to be super big it's probably our maybe best season of the entire video i don't know but super big in the sense that if things don't go well you're gonna see it just shook up enough to where we fix the things that don't go well in the playoffs but as of right now on the screen right now you see one loss we have one we have lost one game in this entire oh there goes one okay let me shut up. Luca wins MVP. King Bacot, Rookie of the Year. Jaden Quainton, Sixth Man of the Year. What? 17, 8, and 2 with two blocks and a steal off the bench in 25 minutes a game for the Kings. Damn. And he started hitting threes now. Wait a sec. I thought I took that away from you. What the hell? Damn, he got a zero three-point tendency and he's still shooting threes. That's a real shooter. I can't even, I can't even hate. You know what? I'm not even mad because damn, he's at 86. Oh, snap. Nah. Oh, wow. You know what? I can't even be mad for a few reasons. I believe this was the free agency that I let him go was the same free agency we got. What was it? Either Sengun. I think it was Sengun. It had to be. It had to be that we were signing somebody else, I believe. I think we signed Sengun and Jaden McDaniels that free agency. Also, he is a six man still, which doesn't really make sense at 86, but nonetheless. And third, I'm just happy to see him becoming what I thought he would be, which is a really damn good player. 92 interior. What kind of badges he got? Okay, he's only got nine. That's kind of all NBA first team. 
team, Cameron Boozer. And we won 58 games, one less than the Spurs. By the way, yes, Jaden's Kings were in the playing. Screw, let's see how they do. They law up. Oh, they made it to the eighth seed. Okay. We actually almost almost could have played them if they would have just won. But instead, we're playing Utah with Tajan Salon. Us Usman Garuba. Wasn't he around? Usman Garuba starting at center for them. DeJounte Murray and Keontae George. They got DeJounte out of uh, the Suns. And honestly, this round should be light. I don't even know what I would change. Come on. Like, let's just be honest. Come on. We lost two games. Oh, they got Hugo off the bench. And Hugo never... I'm not going to lie. Stojakovic ended up the better version of Hugo, even though we lost this game. But we lost because Elijah want to shoot 414. McDaniels won for eight. Come on. Don't lose no three games. Okay, cool. Just win. Just win. Thank you. 4-2. Nice. I'm like, it seems kind of fluky, whatever I'm seeing right now. Okay. Next round, Isaac Hayes, Nikola Jokic, and the Denver Nuggets, and Michael Porter Jr., old Zach Levine. Let's just, let's just let it rock again. Game one is a win. Game two is a loss. Game three is a loss. All right, I don't know if I would change anything at this point. You know what, actually? Go to the matchup. Put Cameron Boozer on Jokic. Put Cam... And you know what's funny, actually? I think Jaden McDaniels is our best interior defender. Uh, that's actually crazy. They still have Jamal Murray and Aaron Gordon, I just saw, but they're just on the bench. That's kind of fire. Oh, Aaron Gordon is starting now. Okay. Um... Was he starting the whole time? I don't think so. Anyways, and they tell me I'll give more minutes to Trace Jackson Davis and give less to Elijah. Really? I guess we could use another big, but okay. Three point game, four point. If they score, I'll jump in. They did not score. Okay, we won that one by four. Jokic with 26 and 11. That's good. Team effort. Next game is a dominant win. A nearly 20 point win. We held Jokic to three for 16 with a triple double, but three for 16. Obviously, he's the heart and soul and the whole backbone of that team. So that's obviously good. And that's good to see Cameron Boozer playing good defense because I did put him on Jokic a good minute ago now. And we are going to win the series in six. Jokic, nine for 16, nearly triple double this one. So obviously he played well. Levine, it looks like he got put back on the bench for maybe Jamal Murray because he only played 14 minutes, but he had a crazy game in those minutes. Cam Boozer, nine for 11, six blocks, four steals, four assists, eight rebounds, 31 points. What is his block rating, actually? The block is at 87. Sengun's is a 63. Yeah, just for that alone, dude, I damn near might as well put him at the center right now. And actually, I might because we're playing the Thunder. And last time we had Chet out there and was not, it was not pretty, basically. Actually, I'm not going to change no positions this far into the playoffs, but what I will do, go to OKC. Shea is guarded by McDaniels. Chet, make sure he's guarded by Cam Boozer. They are the fourth seed. We are the third seed. Oh, sorry, we're the second seed. They got Jaden Charles. Who the hell is that? I have no clue. Speaking of defense, has Elijah Arenas ever got good at defense? He's got a 90 perimeter defense. He's our second best, or actually third best after um after mcdaniels and lou dort defender no clamps or nothing but i just wanted to check because that, that was interesting to me screw it game one we're gonna sim through it we win that one we win the next one we're up 2-1 3-1 3-2 give more minutes to andre i already i already gave him a ton of minutes oh you know what though oh snap Did they take back our last last year's rotation no joke they might have they're not playing lou dort oh my god i think they're using our rotation from last year hey either way we're in a close game right now okay we won we're going to the finals cam boozer finals MVP. Yo, I think they just took back our old rotation and used it for the Thunder series. Uh, it doesn't say they did, but it says Lou Dort wasn't playing. What the hell was going on? He just didn't play in the last game? That is so random. That is literally entirely random. That doesn't even make sense. Anyways, the finals against the Toronto Raptors. Caleb Wilson, Tyran Stokes, Cody Williams, Jalen's brother. We just played his brother. And uh, Malik Monk, Kaysen Wallace. Good team. They were the third seed. How many wins did they have? Because I want to see what I'm getting into here. Okay, 47 wins. So they had less wins than the Thunder, and I think that's it. I mean, we played the Nuggets. Nuggets almost had as many, but I don't even know what we're getting into because, like, these are all auto, or not auto generated, but you know what I'm saying? All new players. Tyran Stokes, their power forward is their best player and he didn't even start every game in the season it's kind of crazy rj barrett's off the bench okay so they have a good team like as a whole they got good bench players quickly he's off the bench as well grady's off the bench uh, ahmad noel is off the bench santi aldama playoff wise what's got them here Tyrant Stokes really leading the way. Okay, and that's their power forward. So I'm going to make sure. First of all, I'll make sure they didn't glitch our rotation and Lou Dort is playing. Yeah, he is. All right. And then secondly, which they already should be matched up because they're the same position, but make sure. Or actually, hold on. What's what's their matchup? What's their team again? Cody Williams is the three. You know what? Actually, don't change anything. Leave everything as is. Why? Because I was considering letting Jaden McDaniels guard their leading scorer, but I don't want to also put Cameron Boozer on a small forward. I decided to leave it as is. And you know what? Maybe we just run through this and actually finally in our first 
finals appearance maybe win my god it has been so long awaited we are gonna go up 2-0 it's looking like yep 2-0 lead and we just make quick work please i'm gonna keep simcasting because honestly i would like to see my team play in the final screw it we're up by three at 125 to go and we have the ball let's see if we can close this one out we're in toronto a little foreign arena saw rj barrett in the game and he just got a steal that they threw at his back immediately rj the screen by malik monk they're gonna set some floppy screens in the steal by elijah arenas elijah running the break he's gonna slow it down pass it to boozer Caden boozer at that Caden boozer little spin back out booker booker with the pump fake to the basket layup is good that was a crazy possession back and forth either way. Oh, there's something back in Stokes. I saw him on the bench. Jason Wallace. Man, it has taken a lot of work, but it looks like we're about to finally get a championship. My God. Insane reverse layup by, uh, I forgot his name. CJ, Caleb Wilson, whatever. Shout out to Caleb Williams, you know, Chicago's new quarterback soon to be. I don't know. I just thought of some random. Sounds like his name. Booker, insane scoop layup, but what a rebound by Cameron Boozer. Back out to Arenas, back over to Caden Boozer. He'll run the pick and roll with Sangoon, and he'll pass it down and away to Kaysen Wallace, on, who played the passing lane perfectly. R.J. Barrett bullies his way to a layup, and hey, it's only a one-point game. They're going to call a timeout to advance it, which wasn't really necessary, but Arenas is... Oh, never mind. They have one more foul. Defense. Da -da -da, defense. Maybe that's not good that I cheer for them. Oh, my God. They almost threw it away. Hand back to Booker. I don't know how it took that many passes, but Booker will take the free throws. First one is good, 100%. Raptors do have one timeout left. Booker hits both. Let's see, Toronto. I don't know if, if your wing wing players are, are good enough for this. Let's see. Jaden McDaniel should be back in by now. He is. Booker on Case and Wallace. Man, this team, this team is beautiful, dog. Oh, they're going to go to the post. They're not even going to go for a three. Tyran Stokes contested and fade away from God knows where. Oh my God, he just threw it away. But they they called a foul. Wait, what? The ball was clearly gone and out of his hands. And they called a foul on that. That is insane. He was trying to move it to Booker, but I mean, I don't know why that, you know, that much because Cameron Bruce is a good free throw shooter. Yep, we're going to win a game in Toronto. Probably on our way to a sweep, maybe. Sweep, sweep, sweep. 108, 111. Booker with 22. This, especially, too, this is perfect. Because remember when I said years ago uh, that we traded for Booker? We had Sangoon and we had uh, Cam Boozer, who also ended up being a good defender, too. Cam Boozer is pretty solid. I'm like, man, we might need another defender next to uh, Jaden McDaniels. And that man, Elijah Arenas, just turned into it. 90 perimeter defense. Maybe we'll lose this game. No, he just went on a crazy third quarter. Crazy rally to go. Oh, tie game. 121-121. Screw it. They have the ball. 31 seconds to go. Uh, sadly, our starters are not in. We actually have Jesus. What are we doing? What is this lineup? We got uh our, our their, their big is against. Yeah, they're about to give it to him, too. Oh, my God. This is terrible. What's his name? Stoyakovic. Fade away. And he misses it. Timeout. What a, what a, there's no other way to say it than a sellout. My God, that's bad. And you know what, man? We've worked so hard for this, man. I hope this is the first of many. And let's see. Pass into Arenas. Arenas will go left and go back out. Is he going to take this shot? Is it time for Arenas, our, our former top pick, to take the shot? Forget Devin Booker. Arenas, fall away. Three-point shot. And that is off. Give it back to Devin, dog. We're about to lose, actually. There's a second left. And then Gilbert's son thought he was time. You ain't Gil. Barrett will pass it in to Malik Monk from God knows where. That almost went. That kind of sucks because I just wanted this game to end and hit a game winner. All right. Tied game 132-132. We have the ball. 43 seconds to go. Pass in. Elijah. Okay. Makes up for it. He just took a quick two. I didn't even really see it. Matter of fact, let me just show it again because I like I halfway don't care, but he just shot it immediately. Damn. Like I halfway don't care because we're up 3-0. You know what I mean? Pass in. Oh my God. Pass out to Wilson. Wilson spin. Wilson. Big man. Hits the shot. 35 to go. Good basketball, but not exactly impactful right now. Pass in Arenas. Goes left. Screen by Sangoon. Arenas back right. Bodies to the basket. And damn. Damn. Putting his body on the line. He's got an ugly little free throw. He'll take it. 90% good. Second one is also good. 28 seconds left. Hey, that was perfect, though, because, you know, you don't want to give him the last shot or anything close. I don't want to hit them, them to hit no buzzer beater three. RJ with the ball 25 seconds to go. RJ to the basket. Layup is off, and that should do it. Let me, let me get out of here. Actually, I got to see the championship celebration at this point. Jesus Christ, Cameron Booz just missed a 88% free throw no way we go to another overtime I'm be so sick no timeouts left malik monk back up the other way malik 15 seconds 14 seconds he's going left he's stuck he gets a screen he's running back away somewhere maluk for three he hits it he hits it one timeout to go six seconds to go 
Once again, would be very hype with a game winner. Can we actually hit it this time, though? McDaniels into Arenas. Arenas, three seconds, two seconds. Elijah, pull up. He missed it again. Give the damn ball to Devin Booker. What are we doing? They need to write something in the script where I could, uh, in the coding, where I can pick who takes the shots. Just hold on. To, uh, who's got the ball? We do. Free throws again. Oh, my God. I saw us up by two. I was like, maybe they have the ball. Why is it so dark? Why is the whole arena so dark? Who, who turned the, the brightness down? Oh my God, another opportunity. They're going to hit another three. He just missed another free throw. Okay, it got bright again. The lights are bright, Toronto. Be, be scared. Be afraid. Jason Wallace running a pick and roll. He goes left. Passes down to Wilson. Wilson in the post. He'll fade away. No, he won't. He'll stop. Pass it back out to Wallace for three. He missed it, thank God, and that might do it. He hits both. They have one timeout left. You know, I'm going to thug it out just because I, I want to see the championship celebration. Pull up three. That's off. Rebound. Back out. That feels like the, when the Cavs are about to celebrate. And that is it. The Warriors are NBA champions. Oh, my God. We finally did it. It has been, I think, almost two decades. No, 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 no. no. It's been, no, I forgot about 2022. It's been about a decade. Been about a decade. I feel like it's what, early 20, 2031, 2030. I honestly lost track of the years, but damn, it has been, I think, a six or seven or a six or seven year rebuild, a successful one, but not a, not one that was easy to watch. My God. Cam Boozer should obviously be the finals MVP overall carrying of the team. With them crazy arm sleeves he got. He looked like a madman, like a sicko, like a, a biker. Yep, he's the finals MVP, number 12. The plan worked. Everything worked. 35 from Booker, 26, 18, and 7 from Boozer. And hey, this this right here is some 35 and 11 as well. Some we did not have for a long time. So shout to Devin Booker for pulling up. And Sengun wins the finals. I, I had a, you know, I, I know that sometimes they'll give the finals MVP to somebody else and it's not actually that person, but I felt like Cam Boozer probably would have been it. But Damn, Sengun wins finals MVP with 17, 9, and 11 with a steal and two blocks. I don't even know if he dropped 20 ever in the whole series. Okay, no, he just had a triple double with 23, 11, and 12. And then 28 and 14, 12, 9, and 7, and 14, 8, and 11. Yeah, I, you know, you could have just coin tossed it, honestly. We play pretty well rounded basketball. Well, that was uh that was interesting. You know what? Here's what we're gonna do. Thankfully, no retirements. Anybody crit Oh, Draymond, my guy. I wish I would have signed him. I actually Damn, he was on no team, was he? Damn. Hey, Draymond, pull up, man. Pull up. Stay. What? Oh, I overturned his... When? Years ago? How long ago was it? I don't remember. Good God. I don't think it was last year. I feel like I would have remembered that. Yeah, I definitely would remember that because I, I also wasn't recording for a bit and now and I can't... This whole recording, I've been... What? Damn. Well, you got like three other rings with him, so you'll be all right. Or four. Yeah, I should remember the Clay Thompson meme. And he, it'd be great if we had a crazy finesse pick. Come on, Milwaukee. Come on, Milwaukee. Oh, come on, Milwaukee. Come on, we did it. Oh my God. I'm listening to this album right now. Azuka, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but by Earl Sweatshirts came on a fire song. It felt like I was winning a championship right there, which we technically just did. Uh, 2031 champions. Oh yeah, this isn't even a, oh my God. R Radoslav Jovanovic. They, you know what this sounds like? Cause it says Michael Jordan Hall of Fame ceiling and his floor is Donovan Mitchell. Radoslav Jovanovic it sounds like uh people will make memes on twitter sometimes it'll be like julius randall or or joe slonovich randonovich or some or jovan randonovich you know what i'm saying like some crazy stuff and it'll be like basically if he was european people wouldn't hate on him this is basically just european michael jordan maybe ginger michael jordan sounds like the perfect player honestly you know what you can come sit on our bench for a year i guess yeah you'll definitely be the pick he's the only player that even says hall of fame on him kind of funny we get the first pick in the first draft that doesn't have real people in it and we have basically all 14 players under contract minus obvious re-signings Elijah and uh Stoyakovic I might have to make some room but I'm gonna keep the 15th and the first picks damn the two late first picks can't even get me another first in any year like damn screw it I'll take two seconds for him we ball also shout out to Michael Stauffer finally got a damn ring NBA draft first pick the Warriors will take Radoslav it reminds me of um Rasho Nesterovic Slavo Medvedenko it's like a 
It's literally a damn near a mixture of those two names. Hopefully, hopefully they're uh, they're good. 80 overall, 19 year old, four badges, 84 three point shot, 83 perimeter defense, ankle braces, slithery. Okay, 81 shot. He might play year one. Nah, I, I honestly I might keep the little championship pedigree together. Um, 15th pick, two or no, this dude's all NBA potential. Yeah, I'll take him. 76 overall center. That auto generated draft better than the normal drafts. Damn, Elijah and Stojakovic. Thankfully. We should have, yeah, we got bird rights for them too and restricted. Did Elijah get worse? Wasn't he in 89? I don't know. Who cares? Give me Elijah back. I don't even ask for too much money, honestly. He's asking for like the same money that, uh, who was it again? Hugo and uh, Jaden was asking for, except he's like five overalls higher and a steal for Andre. I don't even know if his name is Andre. I feel like that's appropriation of his name for America. To be fair, Peja's name is like Predrag and he changed it to Peja, so screw it. It's in the family genes. Got these two. Honestly, we don't even need to sign anybody else, but I'll, I'll take a gander. Actually, we really can't even sign anybody else. Want to sign uh, Gobert? You know, even if I got to release him, actually, I'm going to have to release him. Let me not sign Caruso. Yeah, let's go to player progression. Forget vets. We are the vets. Hey, all of our players look like they might have actually finally peaked. Look at that. Damn near nobody improved. Who's this? Dallas Stewart. 13th pick. Okay, so make sure he don't leave. Lou Dort, our new vet. OKC got rid of him. But Houston, too. Damn. I'm going to trade Scotty Middleton for a first round top 10 protection from portland don't even know what he's worth at this point but uh i'm gonna trade this dude roy or i don't even care what you know actually i don't even want anything for him too easy roy released see ya 35 ish minutes to all of our stars and i am gonna play jovanovic over lou dort to start just because dog he was the first pick screw it at this point let me see what, what's it what's his potential look like he looks tired of us already jesus he was born in 2011 99 max potential 79 boom percent Maybe we give him a few more minutes. We just lucked into God knows what. I don't even remember. What was it? Portland's pick? What was it? Milwaukee? I can't remember. I'm going to give him uh, 16 minutes. Let's do that. Oh, snap. I just accidentally went through the trade deadline on accident. Oh, but don't matter. We're number one. He was number one. Why don't Booker want to resign? Eh, screw it. Hit free agency. We'll take you back. Oh, uh, speaking of damn, I just realized like, it really hits now, too. We really want to ring with Trace Jackson Davis still here. Also, J.D. McDaniels, hey, let's rob you. You staying here forever. Trace Jackson Davis, let's rob you. You staying here forever. He declined the damn offer. Hold on. There you go. You are 36 and 18, which is the best in the league currently. And how's the rookie playing? He's getting 16 minutes a game. Seven points on 41% from the field. 34 from three. Uh, negative estimated wins added. And he's also not at like a, you know, elite defender yet either. So it's also, that's kind of bad. But we must trust the process because this dude might change the course of the nba so uh yeah screw it Ooh. cameron boozer mvp 22 11 and 7 with two steals two blocks 52 from the field 87 from the field free throw and 43 from three he is the superstar we were looking for i wish we mm, i wish we could have had him and steph steph old self but this really is though the the post step i almost wish i would have said screw you steph and traded him immediately not because i regret those years that we didn't win with him because i mean like your best chance of winning is probably with steph curry but because i just i'm mad that i couldn't get him a ring when i tried Damn, got him kevin durant again caleb wilson went six man damn weren't you starting for the raptors when we played them uh, i guess not sometimes he does sometimes he doesn't Victor wins DPOI, Donovan clutch player, Michael Stauffer, coach of the year. It's the first year where unanimously, you know, best team, everything. Damn, I could have had him beat. That man is on the first team as well, but we got the best center in the league or best big man. I don't know. Sengun makes the All-NBA second team with 9-9 nine, nine and 19.5 a game. Cam Boozer, all defensive first team. He definitely is racking up the stats, but does he have the badges to back it as well now? Uh, Anchor still on bronze. I mean, he's got his, he's got his rebound badges, chase down artists, rebound chaser went up i don't know kind of mad that jada mcdaniels isn't on all defense stuff the real defensive menace in a 2k game would be if we had one of these thompson twins which i could have easily got but it wasn't realistic in our timeline because mavericks had him mavericks were good i wasn't gonna just go steal a player from them you know okc is gonna be our first round matchup this year they were in the play-in and they're the same as they always are i'm not gonna take them lightly i know what it feels like to lose in the first round after winning a ring bro Jaden on shea check guarded by you know all defensive team got golly first game's a win Second game's a win. Third game's a win. Damn, OKC, what happened? Damn. All right, Sacramento second round, they beat Dallas. They got Deuce McBride at the one with Sabonis, VJ Miller, and Keegan Murray. They still got the same two of the big three, but De'Aaron's gone. Matchup wise, honestly, I'm not stressing. Let's see, hold on. We win game one, lose game two, win game three, four, and five. There you go. 
And San Antonio is our final matchup of the of the West. Victor Wimbanyama, Ellis Harrington. I gotta see. Uh, I think I could just go to go to this real quick. Obviously, Victor's gonna be guarded by Cam Boozer. They got Scotty Barnes off the bench. Victor's only averaging 18 points a game. Cam Boozer will guard him. And I say that because I don't know who the hell to put Jaden McDaniels on. You know what? Their PG is averaging 17 and a half. There you go, Jaden. That's where you go. Game one is a win. Game two is a loss. Game three is a loss. All right, I'll simcast it. Damn it, I'm going to give less minutes to Radoslav. I low-key should be. I'm not going to lie. I low-key should be at this point. But screw it. He's getting his playoff experience. Up by two. I'm scared to play Victor. You know, even see him in a simcast. But screw it. You know, series on the line. We could go down 2-1 right here. So not, I mean, 3-1, and that wouldn't be good. There, I say, would be the opposite. Scotty Barnes in the game at the power forward, which is a huge size advantage mismatch for us. Pass over Arenas, three-pointer. That is good. Gilbert Arenas' son. Uh, not Gilbert Arenas. Elijah Arenas, obviously. Five-point lead. Mbanyama. Screen by Scotty Barnes. He's running as the ball handler. Good fight by Boozer, but Victor gets room, and he gets a good shot, but misses it. Boozer running it back up the other way, hands it off to Booker. Booker will pull up a moving three an insane shot and misses it and damn he was on the ground Loki would have got injured there if it wasn't oh snap Garland's on this team too well, how the hell they get everybody over here the fact that we're the first seed in this team isn't is actually a testament to how good we are because damn I mean they might win the series but they got a lot of stuff going on over here they got a, all the great young rookies and they got Garland and they got Scotty Barnes on the bench like I got normal bench players on the bench Booker fades away from three and that is good over Victor Sengun on Scotty Barnes that's not ideal but it is what it is Oh, oh, nearly stolen, but instead Victor's going to get fouled. That's that's the best way that could have went, probably. Screen, Elijah over that. Or, you know, running it. Pass over McDaniels for three, and that is good. Our shooters are here, and we're probably going to win this game. Probably with an asterisk on it, though. You never know with this team or with teams in general. Darius, good layup. I have a feeling they're going to foul. Yep, they foul to at least once. If they send us this line, that's where I'm going to send cast out, but I feel like they won't. Yeah, they're going to let us run it. Oh, Victor double teams Elijah, and Elijah goes to the basket anyways and dunks on the defense. We are going to win this one by 10. Huge game. Game five in Golden State. Oh, my God goodness a 33 to 16 fourth quarter and a 43 to 24 third quarter and Stoyakovich was our leading score with 25 Jovanovic with seven definitely our weakest link but I I you know what screw we're committed and a complete domination game six as well Sengun with 34 we hold Victor to six for 13 with six turnovers and 12 points yeah you can't lose with that formula finals against Toronto again they just barely beat the Knicks who I believe are just the same yeah Brunson Randall GG Jackson OG still there. Tyrant Stokes. I think last year when I played them, I changed nothing. And I, that's going to be the same thing this year. Screw it. Simulate through. Warriors win one. Raptors win one. Raptors win two. I did not think that was going to how it was going to go. Yeah, okay, basketball. Oh, we're up by 30. That's another win. Another win. Booker 38 in 31 minutes. And up 3-2. Nice little comeback in the series, of course. And we are going to win back-to-back -back championships over the Raptors. This is revenge for 2019, I guess. 2032 champions. Cameron Boozer, finals MVP this year. He gets his, his fair share. Damn, Luka has... Oh, my God. Luka has six MVPs. I just randomly stumbled upon this. But, yeah. So, it, it officially took us one, two, three... Nine Nine years of a rebuild, technically, for me, in my control, it, it was six years of failure. That's not terrible considering the circumstances. That's not terrible. So I believe we had Curry for three of the years and then KD for another two. I got to see what year KD retired. Yeah, KD retired in 2029. So after that era of just trying stuff and actually committing to the rebuild and our rebuilding guys that we kind of got through that era actually blooming, it only took one year. So, uh, you know, all the asterisks involved and it's been pretty successful. Um, but uh, minus that, it took a little while. Dante DiVincenzo retired. Shout out to Ben Simmons. He used to be around. Ray Lyles retired. I'm surprised he was still on the team at a 74 overall. And I'm not going to lie. Chris Middleton jersey retirement is going to go crazy. We have two lottery picks this year. Didn't get lucky like last year, 11 and 12. I'll just hold on to him, see if there's anything. Also, uh, wait, let me make sure. What? They hired back Steve Kerr? Oh my God. No, no. I just thought about it. I'm like, wait, I think this would be the year that what's his name? Wait, oh my God. I think he retired. Did Michael Stauffer retire or no? I'm trying to find him and I can't find him unless he got some sort of GM job or something somewhere else. This man is just nowhere. I swear he's literally nowhere. Also Kyrie and Kawhi are trying to be coaches, but I don't see him in any front office. Oppenheimer. Well, Steve Kerr, 
Um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but and Darvin Ham over there in Houston. Uh, Steve Kerr, I can't believe I'm saying this, but welcome back. I don't know where Mark, uh, my bad. I don't know where Mike Stoffer went. Welcome back. 13th pick or 12th or 11th or whatever. Anything good here? Randy Dunleavy, 21 year old. Wait, oh my God, he's 5'9". That's kind of fire. I'll take him. Edgar Howard, 19 with Willis Reed potential. I'll take him. Damn. Oh, well, obviously Devin Booker. This, this is our guy. He, he ain't going nowhere. I'm sorry. I won't allow it. Um, it's funny though. This actually, finally this man, Jason Tatum hit free agency. Jalen Green's here again. But yeah, make sure Devin Booker don't go nowhere. Don't even think about it. You know what, D-Book? I'm going to pay you well. You've helped change this franchise around. I'm not even going to... Hmm, I'm going to front load this contract, Devin Booker. You know me so well. Uh, I'm going to give you, though, the max right now. 67 million. You're going to be getting paid until you 40. Because that's how well you've done for the Warriors. You turned us around. You, you did us well. We're doing swell. We're never going to have money again. So you might as well take this money anyways. I'll throw a team option in the last year. There you go. Making the super bag. I'm paying you handsomely. Also, go get a... I rock with Almanza. He's pretty cool. He's never done nothing wrong to me. How old is Almanza? 27? Yeah, perfect. He, he's still in his prime. Devin Booker, welcome back. Dan, they trying to get rid of Lou Dort. Nah, I rock with Lou Dort. Bring him back. Actually, we might be out of roster spot. Yeah, we're actually going to need to make a roster spot. So... Sorry, Lou Dort, it's been real. The book goes down by an overall on Q. Don't care. This is now, this is when, you know, we're, we're making up for the Steph Curry years with the Devin Booker years. Aiden McDaniels actually went down by one. Jovanovic went up by four. Technically could be the starting three already. He's got six badges. Pro touch went up to silver. He's got posterizer now. Damn, what's his dunk? 92 dunk, 93 pointer, 88 defense. Yeah, this dude's going to be an insanity. This dude Anderson didn't get better at all, and he's 24. I'm going to get rid of him. We'll see you. King, you know what? At this point, we're exploiting stupidity. King's two first round picks. And I've been trading with them this whole video. They keep on selling. 35 minutes to all the stars again. 24 for McDaniels. 22 for Boozer Stoyakovich. 18 for Jovanovic. 8 and 6 to the last two guys. Nobody else playing. Also, new coach, Steve Kerr. Yeah, we, we've been on balance. And we are a five-star balanced team. I can't believe they brought him back. Yeah, at least, I'm not going to lie. I had um Mike Stauffer with the Warriors playbook on. So, at least I've got to change that. 35 and 15 this year. Tied with the Grizzlies for one. Now, damn, Sangoon want to hit free agency. You're not getting that super duper 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 max. I'm sorry. Although, Booker hasn't won a finals MVP and you have. Hey, real quick, can we throw some of these guys in the G League? Oh, damn, I can only throw one at a time. But the 19-year-old dude, he probably got the most potential. Cam Boozer wins another MVP with similar numbers. Jaden Sharp, clutch player. Steve Kerr, coach of the year. A little bit full circle, I guess. Whatever, I'll allow it. Sangoon makes the third team as well. Boozer, defensive first. And uh, no, no, no. Oh, snap, I saw Joshua Higgins on the all-rookie team, the point guard we drafted. He was on all-rookie second, but that's crazy. S screwed, I'm going to click simulate playoffs. Lakers pack them up. Second round Mavericks. Okay, let me let me slow it down. 3-1, 4-1, Memphis. Team that was tied with us for a minute. We'll win game one, game two, game three. And look at who's in the finals. Cameron Mercer and the Detroit Pistons. He was the number one pick once upon a time. He's now a 93. Damn, they are trash. Detroit number two. Wait, I gotta see this. Number two seed, 51 wins, but they oh okay, 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 okay. They what the hell? Their next best players after Caden Cameron Mercer are another point guard and shooting guard and shooting guard. What the hell? Marcus Johnson, Jaden Ivey, and Josh Giddy. Those are our next three best players. So they basically have a starting lineup, but on the bench. Um, if I were them, obviously I'd probably just put Cameron Mercer. He, he's six foot nine. They could easily just do this without any advi advice. Uh, they they should just put him at the three. Put literally anybody else at the four. Shoot even Josh Giddy. But you know what? I'm not complaining, or even Jalen Williams. But I'm not complaining. Um, if we lose a game, we are frauds. Oh my God, we lost game one. We lost game one. Game two. How about game two? Okay, cool. Game three. We lost again. Hold on, real quick, real quick. One change. Just so I don't act like I'm not playing around. It is the final. Where is my guy, Jaden McDaniels? Guard Cameron Mercer. Cade Cunningham will have you guarded by Percy Elijah Arenas. In the starting lineup. Not our two best defense. Marcus Johnson off the bench. Damn, he's averaging 24 off the bench. He's actually leading the team in scoring. Um, we'll figure it out. I mean, you're off the bench. Unless he's starting now. He is starting now. And they they listened to me. They put camera. Okay. Okay, bet. Marcus Johnson. What the hell? They reset my damn. Oh, no. Here we go. Not worried about Cade. Sorry, Cade. Marcus Johnson guarded by Elijah Arenas. All right. There we go. Simcast. We need this three-peat. We can't lose this team I just called trash. Now, granted, they do have two 90, 92 plus overall players. And now they're actually playing them both. So now they're really not trash. I can't even hate. But we do have the supreme, supreme big man advantage. It's not even close. And Cameron Boozer will take advantage of it in this one. 23 points. Overall team effort as Marcus Johnson led the game 
game in scoring. And maybe I technically should have Javen, have, should have Jaden on him, actually, because he's the real leading scorer. But whatever, we'll leave Jaden on the wing. And I really do feel like that's a huge part of winning in this. I think I, I'm willing to admit that after years of using the estimated wins added, it is still valuable to see who's the best players who brings a lot of value. But for the ones that it says don't bring value, like every single year, it's been saying Jaden McDaniels is in the negatives for estimated wins added. And it tells me to not play him, don't start him. But I don't care. I definitely feel like in the simulation that it helps both in the simulation and obviously when I jump into the games, having a fantastic defensive player. I mean, come on now. And then when you really think about it, a team like the Cavaliers tends to win a lot in 2K. And granted, they don't have guard def defense, defense, but they have Mobley, Isaac Okoro, Jarrett Allen, usually in these 2K sims. So it's like, you can't hate on that. You know what? After I made those few adjustments, adjustments, we never lost another game. Boozer, triple double, and we win another championship finals MVP, Cameron Boozer. Honestly, I want to keep going until we we lose just because now this other dude is about to hit his his peak he actually might have to take a spot in the starting lineup just because of how good he probably is gonna be like i don't want to stop going at this point um it's not that late over here right now so i'm chilling and i'm, I'm probably just gonna keep breezing through these og and anobi retired and actually another barometer too is whenever whenever booker decides to retire too another thing I have to keep in mind steve curry you didn't retire right okay cool i don't want you to retire at this point when a ring we got pick 11 and 13 and neither one jumped up actually we lost both they both were lottery protected not gonna read too much into it that's better honestly though and you know what i'm gonna let all those second round picks die i'll take a I'll take these two second round picks and I'm going to let all these second round picks wither away. I'm not even going to trade them. Sayonara. We'll be seeing all these guys later. They want me to get rid of Dallas Stewart and uh, David. I rock with Dallas. He's young. They're both from the 2030 draft. Actually, I rock with both of you. I'm not I'm not letting my guys go. You're going to let my guys go. Sengun. Oh, damn. They're giving him trash contracts. Everybody is. And that's the same way I got him in the first place. So you know what? I'm. Hey, just know I'm not sleeping. Go ahead and give him the contract. Five year. Don't want no options or nothing. Just stay with the team. Cameron Mercer is actually a free agent he might go to the lakers who knows pistons might be over with sangoon's back we got nobody else as a free agent and i don't think anybody retired or anything like that and we didn't draft anybody so we should be perfectly fine yep 13 players on the roster 13 players will be staying this crazy this dude nicholas we actually drafted him i just offered him a two-way contract that's kind of funny all right all of our guys are back the number one overall pick dude is now at 88 overall what's crazy is he's basically gonna seamlessly take devin booker's role he is damn near the exact same player as devin booker at least or probably even better actually especially considering that he's an 88 and actually what's his badges look like now oh yeah he start. he got clamps oh my this dude is gonna take over the league are we about to have the uh, actually i guess technically we already have a better dynasty than the real warriors because we won three straight they didn't do that mcdaniels goes down to an 81 he's taking a steep drop so this might be the year actually that uh it is the year jovanovich you're gonna take the you're gonna take the small forward spot especially being an elite defender and Jaden mcdaniels is gonna hit the bench with all due respect love Jaden mcdaniels but if you're gonna fall off this, uh, this much badges are still good though you still be playing on the bench don't worry but if my guys got clamps and everything i might as well get him ready let's see six foot seven he goes up to an 89 at the small forward shout out to kuminga man we had uh how, how's he doing where is he at he's still on the suns he's still on the Suns. Ben only has 11 badges bro yeah he just he never became an elite three-point shooter that's the real issue that was the real he's good but never elite whereas booker has a 93 shoots 40 plus percent you know it's Devin booker and that's the that's been a huge difference and he's our point guard at that so there's also that part of it the minutes are basically just gonna be a swap from previous years so we got booker we got the big four getting 35 minutes jovanovich i'm gonna ease him in with 27 minutes this year and then you got boozer stoyakovich at 22 15 to Jaden mcdaniels if anything i'm actually throwing one I'm going to throw him two more. 17 and Jaden McDaniels. Just out of respect and courtesy. Our starting small forward and multiple champ. Basically, our Iguodala. Now that I think about it. I didn't think about that. If we were to really compare it to the Warriors, this is Steph, obviously. This is Draymond facilitating, even good at defense now, power forward, except he's a million times better at everything else. I mean, he's literally the MVP. You know, it's funny. Bogut used to be a pretty good passer, but he wasn't no damn Alper and Sengun, so I can't give him that. Uh, we're just better. Yeah, we're just better. This might be Durant right here, and then this might be Clay. But then you got another Clay down here. Screw it. Honestly, I would say it might be disrespect, but it's also respect to say that this is Sean Livingston. And you know what's crazy, actually? I'm pretty sure Caden Boozer. Ah, oh, it's not him. It was um, it was the dude we traded to the Suns. Topich. Topich had mid-range maestro, I think, on Hall of Fame. I'm pretty sure. Unless I'm wrong. Mini magician, whatever it is. Trey Jackson's still here. This is uh this is Kavon Looney V2. Almanza, you just randomly ended up in the culture. I don't even know how this happened, really. I think he was the dude that I said that we had super early on in his career as the second round pick. I think we drafted him and then I got rid of him because we didn't we didn't play him or need him. So it's kind of full circle as well to that. Now on here for four straight years. And I even I didn't think about it too much. I'm like, I rock with you. Kept him past the first year where we lost and kept him in the rotation because it just made sense. Good shooter, 
good big man good rebounder good defender like, anyways get me out of my bag out of my reminiscing bag on this team boozer it's letting me re-sign him welcome back other boozer has, that is crazy we really got two brothers welcome back we're 40 and 8 raptors actually have a better offensive rating than us but they have a much worse defensive rating whereas we're the best defensive team in the league and where are the raptors at they're about top 10 but there's a big difference between 111 and 117 rating differential we're number one by far by five over the second best team in the league and shouts are actually that's the spurt um which maybe they are the second best but yeah shout out to the raptors though they're a good team but they did also lose last year cam boozer wins another mvp with 19.9 so 20 11 7 a steal and a half a block and a half 67 wins that's our best season ever by far i think we've only ever been 50 win teams warriors sengu makes a third team as well again also this once again was jovanovic's first year starting he averaged 14 four rebounds four assists on 49 from the field and 46 from three which was the second highest on the team just barely behind devin booker but they're clearly the two best three-point shooters and also he only averages less than four points less than devin same with uh four points less than elijah as well so he's basically already slotted in crazily enough we basically lucked into getting this dude and he's basically already slotted in as equally as good as them in scoring maybe not facilitating though not that yet and they because of that they still provide a lot more value like i said i still think this wins added thing means a lot for added value and actually you know what's crazy Dan mcdaniel's not even in the negatives no more that's crazy usually even last season negative 2.5 this season off the bench he's a, a pure one that's that's kind of wild maybe this is maybe this is is actually his peak role who knows maybe i was wrong this whole time doesn't matter we won four rings um denver four two thankfully we got out of there i thought it was about to get tough for some reason second round dallas okay okay three one you know what i'm gonna make a slight little change and actually i know jovan Jovanovic is real good at defense too. What's his 94 perimeter? What's Elijah 91 perimeter? Yeah, Jovanovic is already our best perimeter defender in the starting five. So go ahead and throw him on uh throw him on Luca because I don't think they have any other threats aside from him. Oh, they got Jalen Green, but Elijah's on him, so hey, you can't ask for much better than that. Let's see, Simcast. Come on, we won 67 games this year. Don't 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 fold now. Three one comeback. Shout out to the Thunder. First game's a win uh, in the comeback at least. Luca had 39, but nobody else. I think they had one other person in double digits. I saw second game we're getting smoked is this gonna be it damn damn but we low-key we low-key push back hold on ah uh, it might be too little too late jovanovic and stoyakovic combined for five for 17 in this game damn warriors eliminated officially we lose to dallas dallas gets smoked by victor i will say we we have beat victor a few times so i can't say i'm you know mad that that oh we we can't avenge ourselves we beat victor a few times um did we even come back 3-1 on him or was it i don't know we've played a lot of series at this point um it has officially been anybody we oh well trace jackson davis he was in his rookie year when this started so he's in year 11 now yeah so i've been rebuilding this team now for 10 years and trace is a good representative of it he's got three rings we won three straight we have now officially lost Devin Booker is not in the brink of retirement but I'm gonna retire I'm retiring as a GM Bob Myers for real except I'm not retiring my team is about to sell I'm retiring right now at the peak at the mountaintop basically not really but whatever we'll be back there in three seconds and uh hey it's been real it's been fun I don't want to I have more to say so I'm not gonna say all that yet but that is officially gonna do it you know I I don't know how long all the playoff rebuilds are gonna be because I'm you know I'm gonna rebuild all the teams or a lot of the teams that get eliminated or whatever I just saw I'm recording this after the second half of the playing games and I saw the Hawks got smoked maybe them too I know I did a Warriors rebuild recently and obviously if you're still here at this point you might have even known that but you don't even care so who cares okay cool i haven't done a hawks video in a year so that's good what was I, what i was gonna say was i don't know if every video is gonna be this long but i do appreciate if you stuck around and um what was i gonna say it's nice to take this slow realistic route because then not every single video is the exact same or at least doesn't feel the exact same more intention behind it and it might take longer sometimes, but we ball. Let me know if you liked it. Uh, it's been real. It's been fun, but it's been real fun. You can subscribe if you feel like it. You got free volition. Three rings. I can't be like Clay. I can't hold up the four. And I'll uh, see you around. Yep. Good.